Chairman, I've had confirmation that the live stream has started. Thank you very much, Rowena. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this virtual meeting of the Central Sub Area Planning Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I will outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may choose to use their video. If the Council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I will adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I will adjourn for a short period to try to re-establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I will remind you to switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise you. The vote will be taken verbally by roll call and the result announced by the Democratic Services Officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on each planning application in order to be able to vote. We have public speakers at the meeting today and they will be joining the meeting by telephone. Where a member has declared a non-registerable interest, a disclosable pecuniary interest or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they'll be invited to rejoin the meeting at the appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting is that members of the committee who wish to speak on an item should indicate by using the X in the chat box. Before we start today's business, I'll ask the Democratic Services Officer to ask committee members to confirm their presence and state their electoral division, please. Thank you, Chairman. I'll now call your name, Councillor Alvey. Good morning, Martin Alvey, Member for Fiorc and Flame Place. Thank you, Councillor Batters. Good morning, Chris Batters, Lenivet Blizzland Board. Councillor Bull. Good morning again, Jackie Bull, St Austell Polter. Councillor Dyer. Councillor Dyer. Did you hear me? No, I can hear you now, though. So what went wrong with the blinking microphone? I, I think you were on mute. If you could just um, confirm your attendance and uh, tell everybody your division, please. I am here and I represent a huge geographical division that goes right around Toronto. It's called Kenwyn, Chasewater and the, the Baldew Ward of Key Parish. Thank you, Councillor Jewell. Good morning, yes. Councillor Jewell, Fowl of Boslawick. Councillor Kenny. Good morning, Joanna Kenny, Newquay Pentire. Councillor Martin. Good morning, John Martin, Councillor for Helston South. Councillor May. Good morning, Councillor May, Penryn West. Thank you, Councillor Mould. Good morning, Carol Mould, Councillor for St Member and St Andelian Ward. Councillor Thomas. Councillor John Thomas, Electoral Divisional Member for Lanner and Scythians. Thank you, Councillor Tudor. Good morning, Councillor Tudor, Three Milestone um, and Glowth Division. Sorry, there's a delay on my line. Thank you, Councillor Simmons. Yes, good morning, uh, Councillor John Simmons. Uh, Penryn East and Moyer. Thank you. I can confirm that the following officers are also present. Gavin Smith, Development Management Group Leader. Matthew Stevenson, Development Management Group Leader. Laura Potts, Principal Development Officer. Samuel Dunn, Development Officer. Eve Ashworth, Development Officer. Tim Marsh, Principal Development Officer. Claire Broughton, Senior Development Officer. Nikki Mannell, Affordable Housing Officer, Michelle Cowie, Environmental Protection Officer. Today's meeting producer is Rowena Brebner and I'm Emma Co Democratic Officer. Thank you, Chairman. 
Thank you very much. Uh, would you care to read out the apologies, please, Emma? I will. Thank you, Chairman. I have apologies today oh, from oh, Councillor Greenslade and attending as his substitute is Councillor Simmons. I also have apologies from Councillor Peter Williams and Councillor Malcolm Brown has sent apologies for late arrival. He will be joining the meeting later. Thank you very much. And I want to thank Councillor Mary May, who's standing in as Vice Chairman today uh, as well for Councillor Greenslade. Agenda item two, are there any declaration of interest, please? No, right, thank you. Agenda item three, uh, minutes of the meeting of the 25th of January. You've all had them for accuracy. Uh, would someone care to indicate in the chat box that if they wish to propose those minutes, please? Oh. Uh, Councillor Jewell, I will propose those, please, Jackie. Thank you. And Councillor Batters, I think, is seconding. Is that happy correct? To sec happy to second, Chair, yes. Thank you very much. Um, would you like to take the vote then, please, Emma? Thank you, Chairman. I'll do a roll call vote. Councillor Alvey. Abstain. I wasn't present. Thank you. Councillor Batters. Four. Councillor Bull. Four. Councillor Dyer. Four, try that. Thank you. Councillor Jewell. Four. Councillor Kenny. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Mould. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Tudor. Abstain, I was not here for the meeting. Councillor Simmons. Abstain, as I wasn't present. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm they have been carried as an accurate record. Thank you very much. Then we move on to agenda item four and the applications for consideration. Agenda item 4.1 is PA 20-03214. Miss Susan Ango, flat three, Ashley House 14, Esplanade Foy. Removal of existing chalet containing ancillary domestic accommodation and construction of new building contain containing ancillary accommodation and replacement windows. The case officer was Ellie Jolliffe, but Ellie is not with us. Uh, and so Gavin Smith is presenting. Thanks, Gavin. Thank you, Chairman. Please can you confirm when you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Thank you. OK, thank you again. The, the key issues for this members is that the sites in the conservation area so we need to have a look at the proposal, the scale and design of the proposal to see how it fits into the character of the designated heritage asset. Importantly also is that the proposal itself is for is to replace an existing building. However, we haven't got evidence before us to demonstrate that that existing building is lawful. So for the purpose of this assessment, I'd recommend to you to give no weight to the building that permission sought to replace. The best thing to do when considering this application is to consider it fresh for a new building, a new outbuilding to the rear garden and of course new windows to the front. Last issue to consider is neighbour impact. Okay, this is the site uh, outlined in red. We're in Foy in the heart of a main town. Can you still hear me? can now, but uh, it yeah. went faint all of a sudden. Shall I go back? Are you up to where I'm up to? Yes, Gavin, I am, I think. Yeah, okay, we're, in the cool. centre, we're in the centre of Foy. We're in the centre of Foy, thank you. And here we are again, outline, the application site's outlined in red. Conservation area, the, the purple shapes are listed buildings. You can see they're reasonably close to the application site. It's a high quality conservation area. This is an aerial shot. We've included this slide just to let you know the character of, of, of some of the properties in the area. So this is our site here with the with the white arrow. That's the existing outbuilding. That's that's the building itself, the flat. Neighboring properties contain a mix of outbuildings and extensions. So for example, if we go to the property to the north, that's an extension. 
Over here, we've got outbuildings, outbuildings. If we go to the south, that's an extension. If we keep on going along, it looks like that's probably an extension as well. That's certainly a, a con uh, conservatory. The point is that there's been many additions to the original buildings in the nearby area. OK, this is what's on the site at the moment. That's the existing chalet, which this application seeks to replace, but which we shouldn't be giving away because we're unclear whether or not it's lawful. This is the application site's flat, which runs the full length across here. There is a flat underneath that. There's a flat underneath there, which is courtyards there, and that's a flat roof building. As you'll see later on, the way that the occupants of this flat here access their existing chalet at the moment is to walk across the flat roof building onto the grass and into there. They've also got access from the side. You can come up, you can come around these steps and enter it that way. This is what's existing again. What's existing, sorry, again, ignore the existing building. The reason that this is here is to show the layout of the existing building, the existing flat. So it's the full length. They've got a door here to access the existing building they've got in the garden. They can walk out this door here across the flat roof straight onto the grass to get in that way or again come in the steps. This is what's been proposed. That's the outline of the outbuilding. Shower room in the back, bedroom, living, um, the, main, the main area. Again, this is the flat roof with an access from the door. In terms of neighbour impact, this is probably a good slide to show that. Um, the only opening proposed on this building is towards the south, and what's proposed to mitigate any potential overlooking to the property to the south is a timber fence, which you can see here shown in the on the red hashed line. This is the proposed outbuilding. In terms of dimensions, it's 3.7 metres to ridge height. The width is 6.3 metres, the length I should say, and the width is 4.2. Finishings, it's going to be a natural slate roof. Render to the elevations with the exception of the northern end, which faces the hedge, and that's going to be composite horizontal cladding. Um, wooden frames for the windows, um, wooden, fascia, wooden fascias, and the agents agreed to a cast iron downpipe. OK, here's some photos. So this photo down the bottom, if we can start here, we're standing on the site at the moment. That's the existing chalet. That's the application. That's the flat. Um, and that you can probably just make out is the flat roof, which they can come out of their door, which is around about there, walk along and access the chalet that way. This photo here is looking that way towards a neighbouring property. You can see some windows there. This is where a fence is proposed to screen any overlooking from the new door, which is proposed on the new replacement building, a location around about there. This is the flat um, at the moment. That's the door you can open and that's the flat roof. You can walk, walk out to access the garden and the chalet. This picture down here is the neighbouring property to the north, and you can see a, an extension there. Um, this picture here is the other side of the flat, which shows the door and the steps. OK, this here is the courtyard area for the neighbouring property, neighbouring flat at the lower area. And if I can just skip back some slides, I'll give you some context to that. So this is our flat here. Below that is, is a different flat and their courtyard area, which I was just showing you there, is this area just here. Also, the flat below owns this building here, which is the single storey building with the flat roof where the current occupiers of the flat walk across to access their chalet. So the reason why we've included this is just to give you an idea of some impact onto these onto this property. So this is the courtyard. Um, there is this wall here is actually a good one to show. So that, that's a retaining wall. If you look at this picture here, the chalet would be would be or the proposed outputting, I should say, be somewhere around here. It's significantly higher 
but a good a good a good thing in terms of impacts for the occupiers of this property is that they've already got this retaining wall and significant vegetation on the top we think it's not going to be prominent to the views and a photo coming up will show that a bit better so these are this this is a photo also of the courtyard looking back that's the that's their um that's the flat roof that the occupiers of the flat can walk across now to access their garden Another picture of the courtyard, and this is standing on the flat roof, looking back towards the side of the flat, which is subject to this permission. And the courtyards below that, you can make out here, this is some of the vegetation I was talking about that would help screen the new proposal from any views of the people that, of any people that were on the courtyard below. In terms of the balance of considerations, um, this proposal would improve living accommodation on a site within a main town, which is a good thing. That way weighs in favour of approving it. Your officers consider that the design and nature of the proposal is not out of keeping with the neighbouring properties that already contain extensions and or outbuildings. Importantly also is that this proposal will harm the conservation area by introducing a building of modern design. Your officers think that this is at the lower end of less than substantial due to the design of the replacement being of good quality. We think that there's no material harm to neighbours and Madam Chairman, you have a recommendation of approval. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gavin. We do have, we do, we do have a member of the public speaking in objection. That's Mrs. Thea Gregory. Can you hear us, Mrs. Gregory? Chairman, can Thea Gregory please press star six to unmute her telephone? Hello, can you hear us, Mrs. Gregory? Hello, can you hear me? We can, you're quite faint. Um, so okay. perhaps if you could speak up, that would be helpful. Uh, Mrs. Gregory, you have three minutes to state your case. You'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. OK, I'm speaking on behalf of local residents and neighbouring properties. My husband and I own apartment two in Ashley House, which is located on the floor below the top floor flat. Ashley House is a conservation area and is one of the oldest buildings on the Esplanade. We believe built around the 1700s. It's a traditional Cornish property of natural stone, hanging slate tiles, a slate roof and render. The town council and a number of neighbours are strongly opposed to the application and have objected to the proposed scheme. To summarise, the objections are as follows. The scale and size of the development is out of proportion to the parent dwelling and would adversely affect neighbouring properties. The scale of the development located in a small enclosed garden within a terrace of properties would result in unacceptable overdevelopment and intensification of the site and would conflict with the proportions of the existing dwelling um, as well as being out of character to the, con to the conservation area, a nearby Grade 2 listed building. The development represents a 46% increase in the floor area of the one bedroom parent property. The erection of the proposed 1.8 metre close board fence between the property and number 16 would result in an unacceptable loss of light as the fence will be less than a metre from their kitchen and bedroom windows. The planning application was first submitted in April 2020 and throughout the application's life, the planning officer has stated that she had concerns with regards to the size and structure of the design of the building. On the 6th of July, the planning officer wrote to myself confirming that it was the council's intention to write to the applicant to ask them to make the chalet smaller. Since then, the applicant has submitted several revisions of plans, but none have attempted to make the structure smaller. And in fact, the footprint is now bigger and the height of the roof is one metre higher than was originally proposed. The scheme is not acceptable to the council's senior development historic environment officer who has opposed the scheme, stating that by virtue of its scale and use of unsympathetic modern materials, the structure would be overtly modern and suburban character addition, and it would erode the high quality of the surrounding built environment and as such would fail to preserve or enhance the character and appearance of the conservation area and the setting of Clear House, which is 20 metres away. The planning officer states in the committee report that it is a judge that the public benefits associated with approving the level of accommodation within the main town outweighs the harm to the designated heritage assets in this instance. We failed to see how a chalet building containing a bedroom and a bathroom that is, divorced from, the parent, that is divorced from the parent building in a confined garden area is an acceptable solution to improving the level of accommodation in the town. And we struggle to see what the benefit to the public the chalet would bring. The chalet would result in the loss of the apartment three, 
Scott's Garden, and it would also set a very worrying precedent within the town. It is also greatly concerning that the access to the proposed chalet from the parent building is over the flat roof of our apartment, which is not soundproofed. We would ask Three you minutes, to support Chairman. us with regards I, to our thank objections. You, thank, you very, thank you very much, Mrs Gregory. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, would you mind just staying online a moment uh, in yes. case there are any questions? Thank you. Of course. Uh, before I ask if there are any questions, I've got an X in the, the box from Councillor Veer, who is not on this committee. Councillor Veer, are, are you there and wishing to say something? Yes, good morning. I'm the local member for the area. Is it okay if I speak now? No, 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 sorry. There, there will be a, a place for you in just, just a moment. Thank I'll you. Hold my fire. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. Well, don't worry, we'll, we'll invite you. Uh, right. Are there any concise questions for clarification of Mrs. Gregory, please? I see none. Would you confirm that, Vice Chairman? Yes, that's correct, Chairman. Thank um, you. Chairman, I have a question. Emma Dulcie has a hand up. Oh, sorry. Right. It's the delay again. I'm sorry. Um, yes, um, we're doing the X in the chat box. Don't yeah, I, I did that as well, but again, it's the delay. That's what oh, I'm yeah, there it as well. Okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> I right. can't anticipate if I'm going to ask a question or not. Right. Um, no, I just, I just wanted to ask about the, it was just mentioned about the soundproofing when the access is happening, walking across the roof. Is that an issue at present is what I wanted to know? Um, yes, it is. So when people are on the roof, you can hear footsteps and they're quite amplified or very amplified. OK, thank you. Thank you. I see no other indication. Oh, Councillor Batters. And yes. Councillor Alvey. Councillor uh, Batters. Hi, Chair. A very quick one to the lady. Um, was that roof designed for having a footpath over the top of it, please? Um, I, I don't know the answer to the question, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'll ask the planning officer later. I don't thank think you. it, I don't think it is, but I wouldn't like to say for definite. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Alvey. Yes, my, my question was similar to Councillor Batters. I just wanted to ascertain the, the actual status of that access across the roof and whether or not it's, it's an official access or, or something that has been created um, without the approval of the, the people living in the flat below. Yes, it's unusual. So question of the planning officer a bit later on. Yes, thank you. Right, I see no other indication uh, and therefore <clears throat> thank you very much for joining us, Mrs Gregory. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. We move on to hearing from Councillor Berriman of Foy Town Council speaking in objection. Uh, are you there, Councillor Berriman? Can you hear us? Um, Chairman, Councillor Berryman needs to press star six to unmute his telephone. <clears throat> Hello, Councillor Berryman, can you hear us? Hello, Councillor Berryman, have you pressed star six to unmute? Councillor Berriman, you need to press star six to unmute your telephone. If you can't do that, you'll need to hang up the telephone and redial into the meeting again. <clears throat> Hello, Councillor Berryman. I think we'd better wait a moment, Rowena. Hello. Ah, hello, Councillor Berryman. Good. We, we've got hello. you. Hello, can you Council hear me? Yes, can you hear us? I can hear you, yes. Yeah, thank you. You're quite soft, Councillor Berryman, so it'd be helpful if you speak up. Um, but uh, you now have three minutes to put your points and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good morning to all of you. This application has taken many forms and we now have ended up with a rendered, painted, concrete block building with a pitched slate roof. Access is across the flat roof of two Ashley House, causing considerable noise disturbance to the occupiers below. If our objection is not su successful, then perhaps a condition to soundproof the roof could be attached. <clears throat> this is a standalone structure 
not attached to the main building occupying a large percentage of the green open space, which I might add is very scarce in the center of Foy's conservation area. For this reason, we believe the social, economic, and environmental benefits of this development do not weigh in favor, but against this application. Point four of the planning officer's report, referring to additions to other properties within the conservation area. These are all attached to the main building and in main offering a lobby extension to the entrance. Definitely not standalone structures. According to the immediate neighbors of flat one and two, material harm would result in this development. The resultant harm to the conservation area and the setting of the nearby grade two listed property does in our opinion as the town council weigh heavily against approval. Unlike the planning officer who considers it at the lower end of less than substantial, we consider it much higher on the scale and it certainly does not assimilate well to the character of the surrounding area. We cannot accept that the public benefits associated with improving the level of accommodation within the town outweighs the harm this will cause to the heritage asset of the conservation area. Please do not forget it also sits in an area of outstanding natural beauty. To close, may I draw your attention to the comments from the Cornwall Council Heritage Environment Report. Regarding the proposed chalet, HEP advise that by reasons of its scale and use of unsympathetic modern materials, the structure would be an overtly modern and suburban character which would erode the existing high quality of the surrounding built historic environment and as such fail to preserve or enhance the character and appearance of the conservation area and the setting of clear house as a grade two building. We are relieved to see the condition of family and friends use only and not as a separate residential unit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Berryman. Perhaps you wouldn't mind just staying on in case there are some quick questions for you. Yes, um, that's OK. Thank you. Are there any questions for Councillor Berryman, please? I see none indicated. Would you agree, Vice Chairman? Yes, Chairman, and no hands up either. No, thank you very much. Uh, then thank you for joining us, Councillor Berryman. Thank um, you. And we move on to uh, Susan Angove, who is the applicant uh, on, on this application. Um, Ms Angove, are, are you on the telephone? If so, I believe you have to press star six. Can you hear us? Rowena, I yes. think she's there, Chairman. <laughs> Good morning. Can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can. Good morning. Good morning. You're very, very faint for the committee, um, Mrs. Angove. I, I wonder if we could ask you. Is, is that better? That is better. Okay. I'll thank you the other way. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Um, you now have three minutes to put your case, and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, councillors. I am Sue Angove, owner of Apartment 3, Ashley House Foy, which I bought in May 2019. And I'd like to thank you for, for speaking to me and um, supporting my application. The reason for my application is, is my desire to improve the standard living in the flat, and it was from the start when I bought it a couple of years ago. The present chalet used as overspill accommodation was standing there then, as confirmed by the agent's details and by the owner Mr David Winter and his solicitors and that one was in the place of the previous one. Your, your officer's report explains in detail why our application is acceptable. In particular the proposed outbuilding is modest, it vis visibly it fits in with the main building and it leaves a good sized garden of a big garden, quite a big garden in relation to anything else, anyone else. It also fits with the extensions and the outbuildings at our immediate neighbours. It doesn't overlook or overshadow or overbear them. We have amended the chalet design as asked at each corner by our officers and we accept the safeguarding conditions that they've recommended. 
I would like to stress that the outbuilding is a replacement, not a new structure. Your officers have previously written and stated that, that, the con that in their content that the existing chalet is lawful given the amount of time it's been cited here. And paragraph 29 of their report mentions some supporting evidence. I would like to emphasise this is a simplistic replacement of a garden chalet with no ulterior motive. Hence, I would respectfully ask the committee to approve my application as your officers have recommended. Thank you. And thank you for uh, listening. Thank you very much. Perhaps you just hold on in case there are any quick questions uh, for you. Uh, Councillor Batters. Yes, good morning to you. Um, again, the same question I, spoke, I asked of the ob objector is what is the situation with regards to the flat roof? Was it originally designed as having a footpath across it? Because there's a lots of references to this being the, one of the areas of access to the development. So can you confirm to me whether there's ever been clarification on that, please? That's always been the, the way to get to the garden. Otherwise, you have to go down the, the, the metal steps, then go back up another set of steps on the other side. And that has always been the, the, the back door straight out across onto the garden. And it's been used by the previous owner for, I don't know, years and years. And that was how it, that's the standing, how to get to the garden immaterial of, of the chalet. Yes, I, I think, but is there anything that you, when you bought this property, was there anything in your deeds to show that that was an area that was designed for such a footpath? Because looking at this photograph, it looks to me a normal flat tarred roof with some boarding chucked on top to perhaps make it less slippery or even you're more reliable. Um, has it, was it designed as a flat roof pathway? That's what I'm asking, please. Yes. Yeah. As far as my understanding, from the time that the, the conversion was done in 2000 or whenever it was, that, that it was that's the main way to get across the garden with the two steps. That there's two steps off the roof that go to the garden. That, and that's irrelevant to the chalet. That was how to get to the garden, and and also that when as in there's mention of it in the lease because we have we help with I think with the maintaining the roof. So it, right. it, I, I think I think uh, you've given me that answer. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I see no other indication for questions. Can you concur, please, Vice Chairman? Yes, correct, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, then thank you very much for joining us, Ms. Angove. Um, thank you. And we now move on to hear from the local divisional member, C Councillor Veer. Um, Councillor Ver, um, you you will be asked to sum up after five minutes. Are you there? I am. Many thanks yeah. indeed for um, letting me join you. I apologise for my early appearance. That's all right. I'm get being off the mark. Good morning, fellow uh, councillors and officers. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, uh, which will be briefly about this planning application. You will note the basis for recommendation for approval of the scheme by the planning officer is that quote the social economic and environmental benefits associated with improving the standards of accommodation on an established residential site within a main town weighs in favour of this application. Um, unfortunately, I strongly object uh, to this decision, which seems to defy any reasonable logic. We, if you look at the document, the planning department has conceded that the existing chalet does not have any planning permission. Firstly, therefore, this planning recommendation is supporting the illegal er erection of poor quality outbuildings and then justifying future developments on the basis of improving the accommodation offered by uh, illegal development. It should be noted that the applicant refused to apply for a certificate of lawful existing use of development as noted in the judgment. Secondly, the need for additional family accommodation for a house or flat owner would usually be for the use of an extension connected to the original property or to purchase an adjoining flat or selling up and buying another property within FOI. Surely it is not the view of the council that we support additional accommodation by the erection of bedroom pods within any available space or on a plot. How can it be justified that separate living spaces in gardens improve the accommodation of families? They will never be suitable for children uh, Ashley House has already been more than generous in providing additional accommodation. It demonstrated this when it was split into three 
separate flats. My judgment is that this judgment by the planning officers is complete uh, nonsense and I would urge you to support me in objecting to it. Many thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Councillor Ver. Um, are there any questions for clarification, Councillor Ver, please? Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Ver, can you talk about the um, what was shown to us was that a number of the neighbouring houses also had outbuildings and development in it. So I was just wondering how this one would differ from any of those. So the, the, that's a good question. So the, the immediate property to the left has extended, I think, a kitchen area. But again, it's connected. It's integral to the property and it's, it's sympathetic to the property. Um, I think further down the the, the lane, there are um, outbuildings that are used for for storage, as you'd expect, you know, for a garden tools. Um, this this proposal here is for living accommodation, which is I'm not sure there is other living accommodation uh, in as separate buildings within that space uh, either side of that property, as far as I'm aware. Perhaps I could check that with the planning officer. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. Thank you. I see no other indication. Can you confirm, please, um, Vice Chairman? Yes, agree, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, then thank you very much, Councillor Ver. And we now move on to questions of the planning officer. Can you indicate if you have questions of the planning officer, please? Councillor Mould. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, hi, Gavin. Uh, Gavin, just two things. If you're coming up at the outside steps, um, going up, to, which, which is the second access, obviously, around, and if you were coming down those steps, is, can we assume that there is some overlooking to the window of the downstairs flat? If you were coming down those steps, a, there appeared to be a window there. And also, um, if you're coming down those steps, and as they turn around there, as you're coming down those steps, is there a? No, maybe I. I thought there was a. I thought there was a window. Ah, that window to the left of those steps. Can we? Can we? That's not visible. That might just be me getting it the wrong way around. Okay. Um, and the second thing is, um, again, I the access over this roof. I mean, I mean, is it? I mean, in, in, the, in the great scheme of things, if we were looking for an annex or looking to extend this, would we allow them to be building over the roof of another property like this? It just seems a bit odd in planning terms to me. If, if you could just explain that a bit, please. OK, thank you, Councillor. In terms of your first question, it is confusing the layouts, the layout and the pictures I've been showing you. It's taken me a long time to, to get a handle on them as well. So. Though that staircase you're referring to is at this end of the flat, which of course traverses all the way across to here. Here's the flat roof and the other end is the picture here. Those steps you go down and when you go down those steps, which is this picture here, you would be able to look into the courtyard here. You can see those stairs there, so you would be able to look into the courtyard and you would be able to look into this um, first floor, uh, ground floor, sorry, window on the lower floor flat. So there would be an element of overlooking there. Um, in terms of your second question for the conundrum of the flat roof, um, it's an existing situation, of course, and there's nothing in planning that we're looking at. We're looking in planning at how things change. So we've got a situation at the moment where there's a flat roof and there's a door where people can walk across. There's no restriction on the original permission to stop them doing that. Whether or not building control required soundproofing on that roof, it's unclear. What you need to be looking at today is the, so that's existing. What you need to be looking at today is the impact of this proposal. And the impact of this proposal is to build a new outbuilding here. That could create some more footfall across the roof. Of course, that footfall could already be there by people accessing their garden. The other, the other scenario to take into account is that that's not the only way from the flat to get to there. You can also go through the stairs. It is a more of a roundabout way. I think it's probably right to assume that most people would go this way because it's more convenient, but there is another way to access the rear garden by the steps. I hope that helps. Yeah, it does. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you. Councillor Kenny. Thank you. First of all, my question to, to, that, I, that I asked Councillor Vera about how it compares to the other buildings 
um, or extensions in the neighbouring properties. I mean, it appears that the objection is the fact that it's a standalone as opposed to a uh, link to the building. Yeah, the, so the answer, Councillor King, is a good question, is that there's a range of development that's happened to the original houses. And it's, I think the point made by Councillor Burr is correct in that most of them seem to be attached. There are some, there seems to be some outbuildings down this end. Difficult to see what's down here. There, there seems to be some smaller outbuildings here. There's a conservatory. I think the, the point that we've been making as planning officers is that the original rear facades of the of the buildings has, has changed, whether it be by an, an extension or an outbuilding. We think there's not much difference in terms of harm. So in terms of, hang on, let me take you to a picture. So that's the extension on the neighbouring property, which is going this way, which we can clearly see. Um, would there be any difference in terms of harming the authenticity of the conservation area if that was detached? I don't know. In my, in my opinion, probably not. It's, it's probably neither here nor there. Very subjective that. The one on this side is it is smaller. Hang on, it's got to get my bearings, which is this one here. That is more in keeping and it's a lot more ancillary, of course. But um, this one over here is really of, of comparable scale and um, to that that's being proposed. Is there any access to it other than through the flat and across the roof? No, so the only access is across the roof or those stairs that we've been talking about, those steps. And there's no cooking facilities in the, it's not self alone, it's not self alone, it's just a bedroom and I presume a bathroom, but no cooking facilities. None, none are shown, Councillor, but it is effectively an annex in the garden. So I, I know you probably I know you know how how they work. It could, oh, yes. it could establish themselves as as long as whoever's residing or occupying this building has an, a relationship with the host flat that's ancillary would be acceptable. So we couldn't rule out cooking facilities from developing. But the point is that you couldn't get to it other than by walking through the flat. That's and... right. All the steps. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simmons. Please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't know whether I've missed missed it or not, but uh, it gives the height and the size of the new build, but not of the shed that is there at present. Is it? it, it it's a, it's a, is it the same size or is it smaller? Yeah, the reason why we didn't. Oh, well, why didn't, why didn't mention, oh, sorry, the massive feedback at this end. The reason why I didn't mention that specifically was that. We're not giving weight to the existing building. The reason why we're not giving weight to the existing building is unclear whether or not it's lawful. We, we've got evidence to suggest that there's there's been a building there for a number of years, more than 10 years in fact, but we've had representations from the community suggesting it's changed in terms of its appearance and bulk. So we invited the applicant to apply for a certificate to regularise the building and they declined that invitation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I see no other questions. Uh, would you confirm that, please, um, Vice Chairman? Yes, Chairman. Councillor Mole just needs to take her hand down. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Gavin, just before you leave, I wonder if you could just for a moment step into the slot <coughs> of senior officer that you normally occupy and uh, just to give, give the committee your view on the subjectivity, which which parts of the application they, they are looking at. Yeah, thanks, um, Chairman. I think well, everything you've been discussing is is on the is on the money. It's really. Do you think this building would fit in fit on this site, and how it would come, how it would relate to the attributes of the conservation area? That's that's the that's the key assessment in terms of the benefits that we've identified as officers. They are modest. It's it's a very small scheme after all, and they are modest benefits. It's the modest benefit is putting accommodation within a main town. You've got sustainable modes of travel if you do that for occupiers. You've got inward investment for the main town, and you've got the social benefit of providing accommodation in that setting. We're not suggesting they're significant. We suggest we think they're modest, but we also think the harm is modest because there's already a mixed match of development to the rear of those properties. But the key thing for members to focus on is that you've heard both sides of the coin. Does the building fit in, that, in this context? Um, if you think it doesn't, um, it's a refusal. If you think it does, it's an approval. Thank you. That, that's very helpful. 
Um, Councillor Batters, I see you've indicated, but I'm guessing it's to uh, go into debate uh, rather than a question. Is that right? And if, if so, please start the debate. Hello, Councillor Batters. I think you might be muted. Yes, thank you, Barton. Um, it really was clarifying with Gavin. Oh. Clarifying yeah. with Gavin um, with regards to this roof. I know, I know, I've gone on about it, but was it a roof designed for a footpath? Um, that's all. I it, just trying to establish it because I, I know many times people will suddenly use a flat roof for access to even get to their back garden and jump off it. But uh, it, it could, could we have clarification on that one, please, Gareth or Gavin? Thank you. Yeah. Um, the, the answer is we don't know whether it's being designed at building control stage for the appropriate soundproofs in the roof. We do know that there's nothing restricting planning planning wise for them to walk across the roof. And we also know that that door there. But I think what you're really getting at Councillor Batters is, is it appropriately soundproof? Can they actually walk across that? And unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that. What I can tell you is that they can do it now already, regardless of this application. And regardless of approval or refusal, they could continue to do it. It'd be the same scenario. And there is, of course, the alternative access with the steps. Thank you very much. Well clarified. Thank you. Thank you. We now move into debate. Who wishes to start the debate, please? Um, Councillor Mould, is your hand up again or still up? <laughs> yes, thank you. Matt. No, it's, it's up again, Madam Chair. Thank you very right. much. Um, OK, so for me, this it seems to me that when this development was done, it was a mixed development and everybody had amenity space and it worked well. Um, and the access to the amenity space for this flat was over the flat roof. Now, it, it now appears that whether the structure was there or not, we, we, we are told that we have to assume it's not. So we're looking at this as a structure to looking for um, permission. Now, for me, the increased footfall over that roof for a bedroom with a bathroom, you know, the, inc the increase in use for that building, I would say, is, is, is unfair to the people below and is not the in, would not be the intention if if they intended for that flat to have a building there and walk over the flat roof surely somebody a developer would have done it um i actually think this is over development of the site and i and i don't like the idea of um you know any overlooking there and if i and i sort of listen to what um, councillor veer says if i had children i wouldn't put them out there across the flat roof with access from steps from another way i mean it, it, to me, it's just not a suitable development. So, but I'm happy to listen to what others say um, first. Thank you. Thank you. And bearing in mind that Gavin has said uh, we have to look at the impact harm on the character in the conservation area. Right, Councillor Alvey, you're next, please. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, I had a box just come up over my microphone, which I had to get rid of first. Um, yeah, um, I, I'm sharing Councillor Mould's view, really, that uh, the impact on the conservation area in, uh, in this application is um, is quite clear. The her our heritage people um, object to it. Um, I think the, the flat roof is a bit of a red herring um, because as... Um, as the planning officer has said, it, it's an established access. Um, and in any case, it would come down to civil matters, of easements and such like between the, the various flat owners. So um, I, I'm, I'm not considering the, the flat roof as, uh, as an issue in this, but I am um, certainly considering the impact on the conservation area and, and the fact that effectively we're viewing this as, a, as an empty garden uh, in considering this application. So come the time, if nobody else has beat me to it, I'll be happy to uh, recommend or sorry, um, put forward a, uh, a, a refusal. So are you proposing that at this point, Councillor Alvey? Are you proposing um, a refusal? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, um, although um, well, it's up to you. we're in debate, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to get things moving because um, I, I think, as you say, it's a binary decision, um, this one, and, and I believe that yes we should be uh, recommend um, we should be refusing on the basis of impact on the conservation area and impact on the conservation area thank you uh, i'm going to go to councillor batters next just in case and ask him if he wishes to second that yes, happy, happy to second chair right, thank you and would you like to speak please councillor batters 
No, I think Councillor Alvey has said it all. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Happy to, happy to second. Thank you very much. I do have one other speaker indicated, and that's Councillor Kenny. Councillor Kenny. Thank you. I'm generally undecided about this. The only, the only issue is, does it affect the conservation area? I think the, the rest of it is, we might think about it, but it is whether it affects the conservation area. And I'm not sure that it does. I, re I appreciate that it's a separate building, but there is no access to it. So it can't be set up as a holiday home or anything like that. Um, the report makes a great deal about how it's been built in the same style. And I think if it was an extension, there wouldn't be any question of it be, being approved. So my concern is, uh, I don't think, I'm not sure that we have enough. We haven't had a lot from the um, from the heritage officer. I'm not sure we have enough to turn it down, but I'm, I'm still thinking about it. All right, thank you, Councillor Kenny. Always put, put the uh, good fair view, don't you? Councillor Tudor. Um, thanks. Yeah, it's really interesting listening to this. I'm, I'm like Councillor Kenny, I'm undecided. But what I'm struggling with is if this is an extension, whether in fact it would be approved. Um, that's that. That's the point I'm, I'm decide, trying to decide in my head. Right. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any other speakers indicated. Would you confirm that, please, Vice Chairman? Yes, agree, Chairman. Thank you. Then in that case, I see no point in prolonging the debate. I'm going to go to the vote. Uh, I have a proposal for refusal on impact on the conservation and character of the area from Councillor Alvey, seconded by Councillor Batters. I will just ask Gavin, did you want to say any more, Gavin? No, thank you. Would you like me to read out some draft wording? For yes, please. That would yeah, be really helpful. What you're saying. Yeah. I think if you were minded to refuse it, we could be saying the outbuilding proposed by this application by reason of its use, scale, siting and design would appear cramped with its immediate setting and overtly modern appearance. The application therefore harms the surrounding conservation area and is contrary to the aims of policies 2, 12 and 24 of the Cornwall Local Plan, 2 and 8 of the FOI Naval Development Plan and paragraphs 124, 127, 130, 193, 194 and 196 of the MPPF and also section 72 of the Planning List of Buildings and Conservation Areas Act 1990, which all seek to preserve character of the area and historic environments such as the conservation area. Thank you, Chair. That is very helpful to the committee. Thank you, Gavin. Uh, Councillor Alvey, are you happy with that wording? Very happy with that. Thank, Thank you. you. And Councillor Battis? Yes, exactly as I had in mind, Chair, <laughs> word by word. Thank you, Gavin. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, then we move to the vote uh, proposed by a re proposal for refusal by Councillor Alvey, seconded by Councillor Battis on the words you've just heard read out. Uh, Emma, would you like to take the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. I'll do a roll call vote if you could indicate whether you're for, against or abstaining. Councillor Alvey? For. Councillor Batters? For. Councillor Brown? Um, I'm going to abstain because I had another council commitment during the early part of the item. Thank you, Councillor Bull? For. Councillor Dyer? For. Councillor Jewell? For. Councillor Kenny? Against. Councillor Martin? Against. Councillor May? For. Councillor Mould? For. Councillor Thomas? For. Councillor Tudor? Against. Councillor Simmons? For. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to refuse has been carried by nine votes in favour with three against and one abstention. Thank you very much. And we move straight on to agenda item 4.2, which is PA 200184. Pardon me if I pronounce this incorrectly, and it's Mr. Stephen Bacoy, land southwest of Wistrom, Indian Queens, outline planning permission with all matters reserved for the construction of a new dwelling. It's Samuel Duns is the case officer. Over to you, please, Sam. Uh, morning, Chair. Thank you very much. Yeah, morning, everybody. Share my screen. OK, is, is that coming through for everybody? 
not yet. The presentation hasn't come through. You've just got the image of all the committee members in Teams. Ah, OK, hold on. Sorry. That's it. That's the one. Right, That's lovely. It. OK. Yeah, uh, as you said, uh, Madam Chair, it's outline plan permission with all matters reserved for construction of a new dwelling in Indian Queens. Um, the key issues are principle of housing development, density of development, access and neighbour impacts. Um, this slide indicates the application site, which is within with in Indian Queens. You can see the A30 indicated in green running to the east. This slide shows a smaller scale view of the site within the settlement of Indian Queens. You can see the road access running to the northwest of the site, just along here. Slide shows there is a mixed density and character of development in the area. The proposal we believe would fit in acceptably and is considered to accord with policy three of the Cornwall Local Plan and policy two of the St Enida Neighbourhood Plan. Aerial imagery of the site. You can see the cul-de-sac behind the application site, these properties here, um, which the Paris and local member have referred to in their comments. A point of note again is that this application is outlined with all matters reserved. Here we see the existing block plan with the proposed site set to the rear of the existing house. So that's your existing house there. This is the proposed site. Also a point of note is uh, you can see a slab here for previously approved dwelling within the site proposed block plan. The application is outlined with all matters reserved. The agent has provided indicative plans to demonstrate a site layout that would provide garden areas and parking arrangements that are considered acceptable and did not represent a cramped form of development. The indicated access and parking arrangements have not raised objections from the highways officer. The parking arrangements show two spaces for each dwelling on the site which is in line with traffic policy to car parking of the St Enida neighbourhood plan. And these are indicative drawings to set up the design of a single bed bungalow, although details of appearance are a reserved matter. On to site photos now. Here you can see the existing property known as Wistrom. Just behind the red car, you can see the slab foundations of the previously approved dwelling on the site. So that's just there. Um, the proposed location for the new dwelling is set to the rear of the site. Um, this photo is, is taken out on the road in front of the site and shows a view from the northeast. This photo shows a view from the southeast. You can see it's a mixed character with houses and bungalows and also a petrol filling station just over there. Um, there's double yellow lines on, on both sides of the road as well, so no on-road parking in this location. This photo looks directly into the site. This photo is taken from within the site, looking back to so this photo is taken from within the site and looking at an existing bungalow to the rear of the site. This photo is taken from within the site looking back towards the road. It shows the rear of the existing property in Wistrom just here. This photo shows the southeastern boundary. You can just see the neighbouring properties to this side over the boundary planting. This last photo shows the neighbours to the northeast, the existing boundary here. Uh, balance of considerations. The principle of residential development within the settlement of Indian Queens is considered in accordance with neighbourhood plan and the Cornwall local plan. The increase of building density is considered to be appropriate and would not materially harm the character of the area. This is in line again with the neighbourhood development plan 
the housing policy two and the Cornwall Hall plan at policy 12. Um, on balance, the scheme is considered acceptable and in accordance with the aims of the neighbourhood development plan and the Cornwall local plan. Uh, your officer's recommendation is approval for this case. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, we don't have any member of the uh, community wishing to speak in objection, but we do have Councillor Bunyan of St Enador Parish Council, or at least we hope we do. Uh, Councillor Bunyan, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, Councillor Bunyan, you are very, very faint. Um, okay, okay, I'll put it closer to my ear. Okay. <laughs> that, that's a bit better. Um, okay. Thank you for joining us. You have three minutes to state your case and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. My name is Michael Bunyan. I'm the Chairman of St Enida Parish Council. Our Parish Council is united in its opposition to this application and we would ask you to refuse planning permission. As you've seen from the presentation, planning consent has already been granted for a dwelling on this plot immediately next to the original house. It is our view that this attempt to squeeze yet another small property into the garden is inappropriate. As a consequence, this application is poor, while the proposed housing unit and the associated parking area would be insensitive to local surroundings. We feel that the proposed parking area would dominate so much of the land between the dwellings. Our parish council does understand that this is an outline application with all matters reserved and that the suggested layout shows a one bedroom bungalow. And yet this bungalow appears to almost touch the rear boundary of the property. It also appears that the northern corner of the building would only be about 12 metres from the back wall of the bungalow to the rear of the plot. That's in Princess Park. We are fearful of adverse impacts on the existing property in Princess Park and note there is no condition about boundary treatment to protect the amenity of neighbours to the rear. The committee report makes a number of references to the indicative plan that shows the small single storey building, but it adds that the scale of the building of the dwelling and the site layout would need to be considered considered at the reserve matter stage. This concerns us greatly. In St. Daniel Parish, we have seen reserve matter applications that bear little or no similarity to plans submitted with the associated outline applications. We would ask you to reject the application. But if you feel unable to do that, we would ask that the council has additional conditions to limit adverse impact. Surely there should be a condition about boundary treatments to the rear of the proposed bungalow. And most importantly, we believe that there should be a condition which states that the new property could only be a single story. We'd also 30 ask seconds condition, remain. We would also ask that this condition limits the scale and height of the proposed structure. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Bunyan. Perhaps you just stay online, please, just in sure, case yeah. there are some quick questions. Uh, are there any questions, please, for Councillor Bunyan? Uh, Councillor Tudor. Hello, Councillor Bunyan. Um, Beak, Hello. How would you feel if those conditions were uh, imposed, would you then be happy with the um, planning application? Uh, well, we certainly we still wouldn't be happy, but uh, it would go a long way towards us agreeing to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see no further questions indicated. Would you confirm that, please, Vice Chairman? Yes, confirm, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, then thank you very much for joining us, Councillor Bunyan. And um, we move on now to hearing from Councillor Cole, divisional member. Morning, Councillor Cole. Uh, you know the format better than me. <laughs> You'll be asked to sum up after five minutes, please. Good morning, Jackie. And you'll be glad I'm not going to get anywhere near five minutes on this occasion. <laughs> I am glad. <laughs> uh, 
could I ask Sam if he could please show slide seven, the site plan, please, for the first bit of what I want to say? Yeah. Um, and uh, thank you, colleagues. Um, first, I note that slide four of the presentation shows the Schedule Monument of Indian Queen's Pit. For the record, could I point out that I'm a trustee for that monument, but as it is so far from the application site, it cannot be perceived to be an interest of any sort. Um, in terms of this application, I am in full agreement with the views of the Parish Council. It cannot be said that the ongoing efforts to develop this site, including this latest application, are being done in an overly sensitive manner. The consented dwelling on the front of the pol on the front of the plot is so close to the parent dwelling that I've actually been approached by residents querying whether the access into the site is wide enough for vehicles to get in and out. And I'm not making that up. That is gospel. I note that the six parking spaces are to be provided for the three dwellings, but the indicative layout shows this being done again in a very unsympathetic manner. If you look there, you'll see a courtyard that if you link it to the associated entrance road into the plot would cover in excess of 30% of the site, really dominating the area between the dwellings. It's just such an unattractive, poor quality development. You know, and also we feel it's not in line with the parking guidelines of this council in terms of what we should be looking to achieve as a local authority. Sam, could you put up slide 13, please? That'd be really helpful. In particular, I share the concerns about adverse impacts on the bungalow to the rear of the proposed new property. If you look at this image, you can see the closeness of that bungalow. And I would certainly question whether a new housing unit is appropriate in this location. And as you've heard from the parish council, at their closest points, the distance is about 12 metres. That, that is really negligible and really inappropriate. It is my view that this application should be refused, but if this is not your view, I feel that a condition about boundary treatments to protect the amenity of neighbours to the rear is very, very necessary. And when I say protect their amenity, I would say limit the harm to their amenity. I think that would be the better way to put it. Again, as pointed out by the Parish Council, I acknowledge this is an outline application and we're being given to understand that we should be expecting a one bedroom bungalow at the reserve matter stage. But this is not conditioned in any way. And I feel that there is a massive risk that a different scale of development could, could come forward at reserve matters. Members, the last large outline application I referred to this committee had an indicative plan plus supporting evidence. This showed two bed and three bed single story units. The, the uh, first successful reserve matters, which followed an, an, a successful appeal, ended up with three bed, four bed, five bed, two storey houses with garages. I acknowledge this was a very different sort of application, but it shows what could happen and what could come forward in the future if we don't seek to put controls on it or better still refuse the application, which I think is the appropriate thing to do. If you don't agree with me that refusal is the right option, it must be appropriate to add a condition that would control the footprint, the height, the scale of any proposed dwelling, ensuring that it would be a single storey dwelling with no living accommodation in any roof space. To conclude, I fully agree with the Parish Council that this is an unacceptable, poor application with adverse impacts on the property to the rear. And I have no, I can see no reassurance that it will be um, anything positive coming forward at Reserve Matters. You've heard what I've had to say about conditions, but I really would ask that it be rejected today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Cole. Uh, questions for Councillor Cole and Councillor Kenny has already indicated. Councillor Kenny? Yeah, I sympathise on the fact that reserve matters can change, but I'm not sure we're allowed to um, make any judgment on whether the reserve matters will change. Just is there any particular policy of your neighbourhood plan that actually prevents this? Um, no, I mean, the neighbourhood plan accepts that we, you know, we accept 
in our neighbourhood plan that this is in the heart of our built up area. So development that is acceptable, sort of good quality development is acceptable. But um, I would argue based on the Cornwall local plan policies that this is an inappropriate, badly designed scheme. Um, in terms of the comment you made about um, outline and reserve matters, there was an, another application elsewhere in our parish a couple of years ago. It wasn't as bad as this one, but even then we did actually put conditions on that it would had to be a single story unit and such like. So we actually controlled to a degree what could come forward under reserve matters. Thank you. Are you content? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I see no further questions for Councillor Cole. Would you concur, please, Vice Chairman? Yes, agree, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, then we move on to questions of the planning officer. Uh, would you like to indicate if you have any questions of the planning officer? Councillor Alvey, please, you were first. Thank, thanks, Chair. And, and really, the obvious question to the planning officer is, um, would it be possible to uh, put the conditions uh, that Councillor Cole has requested um, on an approval? Um, because I think, to be honest, that will be pivotal as to whether um, I support it or not. OK, uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, I mean, at outline, all, all matters are, are reserved for later consideration. Um, so design and appearance and scale and, and such like would be fully considered a later application, but I'll refer to uh, Gavin a second if that's okay, Gavin. Yeah, of course it is. Um, Sam's correct, um, Councillor Alvey, that everything's been reserved for future consideration. So fencing, for example, would be controlled when we looked at landscaping as hard landscaping. The siting and design of the house would be controlled when we looked at those matters and at the reserve matters stage. Um, what I would say is that if, if members, well, the real, the proper way to do this would be to do it with informatives. So if you're minded to approve approve the scheme today, we'd have informatives, 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 if I can say the word properly, on the decision notice to advise the consent holder that um, we think that a single story, that a very modest single story building would be the only thing acceptable at reserve matters stage. The challenge would be for them then to demonstrate that. And we would all we could also say that in terms of landscaping, we think you'd require a fence along the southern boundary. No, it's the eastern boundary, sorry, of the application site to safeguard neighbours from overlooking. Depending on where they put their house, of course, it may be that they're listening to Councillor Cole at the moment and thinking that, well, actually, those parking spaces aren't great there. We could move them around a bit and maybe mix them up and we could move the house away from that boundary. We don't know. So the real problem about putting conditions on at the moment, we don't actually know where their house is going in their application site. This is just an indicative drawing to show us where it might go. Um, so the, the pure answer, Councillor Alvey, is you shouldn't, but I think that the applicant would probably take an approval of those with conditions for certainly with the fencing um, and limiting it to single storey and height rather than a refusal. I hope that helps. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kenny and then Councillor Mould. My question answered, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mould. Yeah, thanks Gavin. Do we actually have um, a measurement of the width between the existing dwelling and the slab of the one that's got permission that has to be accessed to this site? Do we actually have a width? Can, it, it, it looks to me like it's single access only just. So there'd have to be a turning circle somewhere beyond that for people to come in and out? Uh, thank you. I, I don't know. I think, Sam, on that one of the first slides, I think I saw 4.5 metres. I think I saw that. Could you go back a couple? Let's do that. Yeah. What does that say there? That's... Uh, I can measure it a second. Oh, that'd be great. I would point out that the highway officer has, has raised no objections about um, using this access. Sorry, one second. 
it is it's measuring on the drawings as 2.8 meters wide the access way in English. lovely thank you thank you councillor tudor Thank you. I just I just wanted to ask um, uh, Gavin again because I was confused because you, you explained that as this was an outline um, planning permission with um, full reserve matters that we couldn't put conditions on now just informatives um, which is something I've not heard in a planning meeting before actually um, but then um, said that we could put conditions on limiting to single storey. Can we or can we not put conditions on to limiting the scale of the house at this point? Yeah, look, my my answer to that is that I don't think you should because they get assessed later down the track. If if you were minded to grant approval today and a reserve matters application came in and you weren't satisfied, for example, with the scale of the house that was too tall or the fencing, there was no fencing being proposed or the fencing was in the wrong place, you'd turn down the reserve matters application. That is the answer. Um, and that's why informed is a real good thing. So it lets the consent holder know that the LPA, the local planning authority, wouldn't it, as it stands at present, wouldn't be minded to approve anything more than um, a single storey house or a development without fencing along the boundary that we're concerned about. So that's my informs us there. So um, I've, I'm sure Dick also, he's seen it done before. The council has done it done before, but the, the real answer is that you shouldn't be doing it because it, it should be considered down the track with, at reserve matters stage. So we shouldn't, but, but, we, but we could. You should. can do whatever you like, but my advice mm -hmm. is to you no, because um, I don't think the appeal would stand the tests mm -hmm. because that hasn't been submitted. So, for example, how do we know that if they changed the location of that house and it was a 1.5 storey of a bungalow somewhere and we're in the middle of the site, that wouldn't be OK? I think we could say at the moment it's probable it wouldn't, but we couldn't conclude that. And it hasn't been submitted. We don't know what it's going to look like. That's why it's risky about doing that. It's also risky about putting the fence condition on because we don't actually know where the house is going in that site. It may be further to the northeast or further up the site, so we don't know. We simply don't know, and that's why we shouldn't be doing it. But I think what I can give the committee confidence is that um, if you were mind to approve it, a reserve matters stage, those things would be looked at, and there are things that we could legitimately turn the application down for if we felt they weren't appropriate. Okay, so, yeah, thanks. That's that's made my mind up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Gavin, before uh, I, I see no other questions for a moment anyway, before we leave you, um, what I didn't hear so much from uh, the speakers was what I expected to, which was cramped, the possibility of cramped form. Um, I, I wonder if you could again just show the photographs while Gavin, you are uh, telling the committee what you think they should be considering on this, please. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, for me, the big issue on this one is whether or not developing this site with a house to the rear would result with cramped form of development. And that's the thing I think you should be looking at the most. Um, but the, the question is, is it a more efficient use of the land? Is it using the site better? Or is it in fact going too far and resulting with development that would be cramped not only with its, within its setting, but also the um, wider development of, of this part of the settlement? Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's very clear for the committee and the photos helpful too. Um, Councillor Cole, you've indicated you can ask a question of the planning officer, but you can't speak again. Only ask a question. Is it a question? It is a question. Um, I'm seeking some clarity from Gavin about the fact that he says the the new layout could be different from the indicative layout. Um, but would I be right in saying that? Obviously, the red line is the red line, and at the moment, where the parking is, it pretty much restricts that the the bungalow or structure is always going to be pushed right down the bottom end of the site, and there's very little scope to have it in any other location. Um, so there's always going to be so potentially there's always going to be the adverse impact on the the neighbours immediately to the rear. Yeah, no, it's a good question, Councillor Cole. You are definitely correct that all all we're looking at now is the land within the within the red there that's surrounded with the red line. So 
Um, in term, it is indicative, which means that this isn't something that we're approving. This has just been submitted as an example of something they could possibly do. Um, I don't know. If I was designing that site, I'd be also considering potentially even a linear building, which could which could move it around. So I, I, it's probable, I think, that it would be something like this, but we can't rule out different options being submitted by an architect going out there and deciding something different. That's the point. The point I'm trying to make to you guys is that we don't actually know. This is just one example of what they've submitted that, that, that they think might work. It doesn't mean that they'll submit this as their final solution. It doesn't mean that they'll have an architect or someone else go out and help them do something different. I think you're right, Councillor Cole, that it's probable of something like this, but we can't rule out different scenarios. Right, thank you very much. And uh, if I'm correct in saying so, you've just advised us that the committee ought to be looking at whether it's a cramped form of development or not. And on that point, unless you're going to contradict me, I'm going to move into debate, please. Who wishes to start? Councillor Mould. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, for me, that's exactly what this is. It's cramped over development. I have real concerns about the access and, you know, as much as I, you know, fond of our highways officer, I live in the real world and that to me is is vehicle conflict, those parking spaces, nobody has friends, nobody comes to visit. And whilst we can't condition anything, and we don't actually know what's going to be there, I find myself in a position where I really cannot support that. Um, I cannot support this, it is overdevelopment. It just, to me, there are too many um, ponderables that we don't have, um, that we cannot make a decision on. And even if we did condition it and we only had a one bedroom unit, we all know what happens in future. There would be nothing stop householder development to extend it in some way. So at this point, without actually knowing exactly what they would want to put on that site, I cannot support it, but I wait to hear what others think first. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mould. Councillor Kenny and then Councillor Brown. Thank you. Well, the real world is what an inspector will look at. Um, all we're being asked to say is, is there room for a third house on this plot of land? We don't, we can't jump to any conclusions. Um, we can't even, the inspector might say if it's a one bedroom, you might not need two parking places, though I appreciate that is what the um, neighbourhood plan uh, policy says. It isn't against the neighbourhood plan policy. Um, it is just an empty, uh, an open space, and can we fit a, a third house in it, even if, albeit it might be a bit on the small side? And I would say, yes, you can. So um, I'm perfectly prepared to, um, to to propose that we support the application with the indicatives that Gavin has suggested. But I just don't think we've got as we, I don't like it particularly, but I don't think we've got enough to turn it down. We don't have any policies to hang it on to. I think we can do nothing more than support and fight it out when we get the reserve matters. So is that a proposal? That is a proposal, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. Uh, I'm going to go to the next speaker to ask if they wish to second that before I ask, um, just in case those that have already indicated do wish to. Councillor Brown, is that something you would wish to second? No, certainly not. No. Um, Councillor Jewell? Yes, I'm prepared to second that proposal. Um, yeah, and, and just follow on from Joanne, in paragraph 29, the new dwelling through the indicative drawings has been demonstrated on providing a meaningful space of 82 square metres, which is considered a set one line above guidance. So, I mean, it, it's complying with with what's set out and the other two properties do. So I, I, will, I will second what she said. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I, um, OK, we'll carry on with the debate for uh, a minute. Right, Councillor Brown, you're next, please. Yes, um, <clears throat> it won't surprise you then to, to hear that I say that I don't support this application and I agree with Councillor Mould. I'm, I'm bound to say though, I do think Councillor Kenny is approaching this the wrong way. We're not here to second guess um, inspectors, planning inspectors. They're not necessarily more consistent than um, um, football referees and certainly I've had a case in my division recently where an application was refused by this council although officers went wanted to approve it initially went to appeal and was thrown out comprehensively we have to do what we think is the right thing not what we think somebody in Bristol or London is going to tell us to impose 
if if outline permission is given say with the um informatives that's not the end of the world and, uh, and i want um I, I want particular the councillor from st Anada parish council to know that just because if we were to approve an outline application it doesn't mean that anything goes then we can tackle it but i think it's better to go along with the advice that councillor cole in particular has given that the applicant hasn't demonstrated um enough at this stage that the app that um, a development can be completed without unacceptable adverse impact on on the neighbours behind. So I think I I think we ought to refuse. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. Yes, I can't let Councillor Brown get away with that. Um, we do live in a world with inspectors. Uh, that's not the reason I'm saying support it, and I didn't say it was. What I'm saying is that is it a is it a piece of property where a third house could fit in? And in my opinion, it is. I take strong exception to what Councillor Brown is. I don't usually argue with him, but I'm rather enjoying doing it at the moment. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Kenny. Well, um, well stuck up for yourself there. Uh, right now, before we move to any vote, I see no more people indicating to speak, but I think we just need to, uh, before the vote, tie up any informatives that go with this. So, um, oh, just a minute, Councillor Batters is coming. Councillor Batters, would you like to speak first, please? Yeah, sorry, Chair, I thought I'd uh, tap the old arrow pulling me through to you, but um, I don't wish to fall out with anyone, but I will support what um, Councillor Brown says, should he put it forward as a uh, recommendation later? Right. Thank, thank you, Councillor Batters. Uh, right, Gavin, I'm wondering if you would like to come in, please, before we go to the vote on, on the informative that would go with this. OK. Should it, should it succeed, which it might and it might not. I think the informatives, and correct me if I'm wrong, that, you're, that you'd be looking to make would be to restrict any new dwelling on this application site to single storey in height and also to require a, a solid fence along the boundary, I've just forgotten my north, I think it's to the east, but a solid, a solid fence along the boundary fronting the neighbouring bungalow to ensure that there's um, limited overlooking. I think though the informatives that you were looking for, that's certainly what the Councillor Cole and the Parish Council were suggesting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Kenny, are you happy with that? In, does that cover the informative? I think did? so, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And you, Councillor Jewell? Yes, yeah, that's no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then I've got no, no further indications for speakers. So I have a proposal for approval as set out, but with the addition of informatives as just outlined to you to limit the size of development in the future and to protect the boundary wall. Uh, so um, that's been proposed by Councillor Kenny, seconded by Councillor Jewell. Emma, would you like to take the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. I'll do a roll call vote. If you could indicate whether you're for, against or abstaining. Councillor Alvey? Against. Councillor Batters? Against. Councillor Brown? Against. Councillor Bull? For. Councillor Dyer? Councillor Dyer? I think your microphone switched itself I can, I can hear you now, Councillor Dyer. You for? Yes, against? I am against the proposition. Thank you. Councillor Jewell? For. Councillor Kenny? For. Councillor Martin? For. Councillor May? Against. Councillor Mould. Against. My name recorded, please. Councillor Thomas. <coughs> Councillor Thomas. OK, Councillor Tudor. Against. Councillor Simmons. Against. Thank you. Councillor Thomas. Should we perhaps telephone? Uh, Councillor Thomas, you're on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, four. That was four, thank you. 
Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to approve has been lost by five votes in favour with eight against and no abstentions. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone. Now I'm going to call a comfort break. Chair, Chair, sorry, we need a motion. We've lost the motion. Oh, to approve. I'm sorry. Of course we have. Yes, of course we have. Apologies. Um, then I'm looking for another proposal. Shall I come back to you, Councillor Brown? Um, yeah, um, I'm pleased the proposition was defeated. I think I need a bit of help first from other councillors and then probably from Gavin Smith, because um, reasons for refusing an outline application are complicated because they have to be a bit a bit speculative. And um, I must admit, the reason why I think it ought to be refused is something like that the applicant has failed to demonstrate that it is possible to undertake development here without unacceptable impact upon um, neighbouring properties. I think it has to be something like that because we don't have a specific um, proposal, even of the number of stories the property would have or where or where in the plot it would be. But it's clearly it's clearly such a tight plot and so close to neighbouring properties that I think we're reasonable to conclude that it is unlikely that that the applicant can demonstrate that he can do it acceptably. And then it's up to him to come back with, with a proposal which demonstrates that he has. So that may be a bit long and it may be a bit waffly, but I'm just trying to explain where I think I'm coming from. And I'm hoping that other councillors may be perhaps a bit clearer than I am. Well, shall we go to Gavin a moment, um, Councillor Brown, and let, let's see what Gavin Smith has to say in terms of helping with words. That might clarify. Gavin, can you come in, please? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Councillor Brown's right. It is difficult to refuse planning applications. We don't actually know what's been proposed in terms of the specifics. I think if we're looking to refuse this one, the reason for refusal is the restricted shape and size of the application site itself. So I think if you were going down the refusal track, I'd, refusal track even, I'd be saying the introdu introduction of a new home on the site by reasons of the restricted shape and size of the application site. So that's what we do know, um, would appear cramped within the context of the site and surrounding properties to the detriment of the character of the area. So that's us saying whatever house you introduce on this application site is going to appear cramped. And the second bit that Councillor Brown was saying and would harm the occupiers of neighbouring properties, I think Councillor Brown is suggesting overlooking. I'm a little bit nervous about that because we don't know the siting and design of the house, so we can't be sure in my mind um, whether in fact there will be overlooking. We would have to be concluding that this, this, the shape and size of the application site is so restricted, we effectively know where the house is going and we know there's going to be some overlooking. Um, we could go down that track, but again, I'd I'd urge caution to men because if we're going down that track if, and it's going to be, we can't rule out a single story house, of course, that's what they'd say at the appeal, it's going to be single story house. Where is the overlooking? All we need to put is a fence in. So we can only conclude overlooking or overbearing if we're satisfied that they're actually, that will result from that. And in my mind, I'd urge members not to go down that track because I think if they did a single story house on on this plot where it is or back towards the centre of the location and put a fence up, there, there wouldn't be material overlooking or overbearing impacts. I think the best way to turn it down is to use what we've given and that's what we know and that's the size and shape of the site and say that any house in there would appear cramped. That's what I'd do. Thanks, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Brown, can I come back to you? Do you Are you, are you uh, content yeah, with I'm this? I'm very reassured that um, Gavin wasn't much more um, succinct than I was. Um, I think what he's done is really to add the extra point, which I didn't pick up really, about the, the size and nature of the existing site being cramped. I picked up the um, the, harm to the potential harm to neighbouring properties. I don't think I used the word um, over overlooking. If I did, that was a slip of the tongue because we don't know enough about the size and precise location of the proposed dwelling to be able to say that with confidence. So I wouldn't want that to be in the reasons for refusal. But I think basically Gavin has put has put better what I said and added one more element. So I think if that's the basis of the refusal, I'd be happy to propose that. 
Thank you. And uh, then I'm going to go to you, Councillor Batters, because you, Batters, you've already indicated you'd be prepared to second. So uh, yes, I have, Chair. I think Gavin has added meat to the bone, we'll say, and um, in that case, I'm happy to second Councillor Brown's recommendation. Thank you. Thank Chief, you. just to be quickly, um, I just if we just need to be clear about why we're refusing. I, I, I know I understand the cramp, but if we're going to say neighbour impact, we need to specify what neighbour impact, what type of neighbour impact. Is it overlooking? Is it overbearing? Is it loss of light? I think you shouldn't say that because we don't know what it is. But if you are going to go down the neighbour impact track, we need to know exactly what it is. We can't just say neighbour impact. But any reason for refusal needs to be clear and concise. I thought you were simply accepting Gavin's word, Councillor Brown. Yes, and I, I think he's. This isn't meant to be critical because we're all thinking on the hoof. I think we're all trying to be rational. I think he's slightly pulling back a bit. And if he is, I will pull back with him because, as I said, it's difficult because we don't know exactly what is going to be proposed. If it were, if it had been approved, we don't know what the reserve matters proposal would look like. So I'm comfortable to go with what officers advise are safe reasons for refusal. Thank you. And Councillor Batters, you're happy with that? Yes, happy with that, Chair. Thank, thank you. Um, Councillor Mould, you've indicated. Did you thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to add, because my concern about this also is the access to this site. That was my one of my reasons for this overdevelopment. You're expecting two, two, one that has permission that's not, that's not built, one that's already built, to be sharing the access to this new dwelling and six garages with in and out, in and out, turning around. I think that, for me, that plays a very large part in the overdevelopment of this site. So I'm not sure if Gavin, but I'm sorry, I'm happy to go with it is, but I just wanted to make that point because that was my part of my reasoning for this overdevelopment of this site. But you've been informed a couple of times, Councillor Mould, that highways have no issue with this. Well, no, Madam Chair, but as I say, we all, I live in the real world. Thank you. All right, Gavin, did you want to comment, please? Yeah, I thought, well, there's not much further for me to add. I'd, Councillor Mould, I think what you're saying is that the access to the adjoining road is, is not safe and suitable as it's likely to create conflict between users due to its nature and limited width. If you were go, if you are saying that and if you'd like to have that for a reason for refusal, the difficulties is that we have a technical officer that's not saying that. Um, it's a risky path to go down. It's arguable, of course it's arguable because I can see what you're saying, but it is a risky track to go yeah. down. Gavin, I know we're going and I know I'm on a losing streak, but I always have to say it because it's the most irritating thing that yeah. we deal with all the time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right, Councillor, we, we, we're almost at the vote, I believe. Um, so, Councillor Brown, we're ready to proceed. I assume you don't want to change any words um, following Councillor Mould's interjection. No. No. Right, then, then we have a proposal for refusal proposed by Councillor Brown, seconded by Councillor Batters, uh, utilising the words that Gavin has given, but which are around the size and nature of the site and the cramped nature. Uh, so, Emma, can we go to the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. I'll do a roll call vote. If you could indicate whether you're for, against, or abstaining. Councillor Alvey? For. for. Councillor Batters? Four. Councillor Brown? Four. Councillor Bull? Abstain. Councillor Dyer? Four. Councillor Jewell? Against. Councillor Kenny? Against. Councillor Martin? Against. Councillor May? Four. Councillor Mould? Four. Councillor Thomas? Against. Councillor Tudor? Four. Councillor Simmons? Four. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to refuse has been carried by eight votes in favour, with four against and one abstention. Thank you very much. And now we'll go to a comfort break. Um, if we have 10 minutes, bringing us back at 10 to 12, please, everybody. And uh, if you could turn off your microphone and cameras, um, for that 10 minutes, thank you.
Right, everyone. How, how are we doing, Rowena? Is everyone back? I think so, Chairman. Do you want a roll call? Um, no, I don't think that's necessary, is it, after a short break? Well, uh, Thomas is back, Madam Chairman, anyway. Yeah, we'll plough on. Uh, right, so agenda item 4.3, we're off down the road to Falmouth. PA 20-01473, JD Weatherspoon, PLC, the packet station for the Moor Falmouth creation of roof level terrace and the case officer is Laura Potts. Are you there please Laura? Yes I am Chairman. Thank you. Would you like to uh, present please? I'm just sharing my screen if you could just confirm that you can um, see the slides. Yes we can, thank you. So um, the proposal is for a rooftop terrace on top of the packet station centrally located in Falmouth. The key issues are the planning history, um, a previous application was refused and later dismissed at appeal in September 2018. The principle of development, then concentrating on the two main issues highlighted by the previous inspector, which were noise to neighbours and impact on the Falmouth conservation area. Then looking at the proposed conditions and mitigation measures proposed. There is an update which has been provided for members with some additional comments from a neighbour. So this is the location plan. This shows the site centrally located in Falmouth fronting the moor. The site plan shows the whole area hatched in purple is the conservation area and nearby listed buildings are coloured in purple. The moor has a mix of commercial and civic buildings. There are nearby car parks at um, in front of on the moor and the quarry car park. Um, there's some bus stops here at the moor in front of um, Weatherspoons. So in terms of the principle of development, the site is well integrated in the town centre. And um, the expansion of an existing business is supported and the pub makes a contribution to the vitality and viability of Falmouth Town Centre. It will provide additional new facilities for customers and um, there's potential for new jobs, which all weigh in its favour. In terms of the character of the area, Weatherspoon sits in a wide valley with sleeps, steep sloping sides. So, this is Killigrew Street here, just behind those properties in Killigrew Street is a steep bank um, with properties here in Wellington Terrace, which look down um, towards the um, proposal. Likewise, this is the quar um, uh, quarry hill and this steps up steeply behind the proposal. So these properties behind residential properties are higher than the um, the pub. So this is the existing roof. Um, there's an assortment of mechanical and electrical equipment, including ducting and netting. From high vantage points, this is unattractive, but unnoticeable from the moor itself. There has been some new equipment which has been installed since these photos were taken, and the spe specification is better than the old equipment in terms of noise. However, I am aware of an ongoing issue with noise from one unit, which is currently being investigated and resolved with environmental protection colleagues. This is the existing rear outdoor area here, which is 37 square metres, and that is at the rear of the pub, set down um, in level. It's quite contained, as you can see. Um, and the other photograph shows um, the rear car park. Now, since the dismissed appeal, a certificate of lawful use has been granted. This means this area can lawfully be used as a beer garden on an unrestricted basis. So currently the premises license is from 7 in the morning to 2 a.m. Friday and Saturday and to 1.30 a.m. Sunday to Thursday. This is a fallback position 
and the applicants will accept a condition restricting this area being used as outdoor seating drinking area if this application is successful. So this is the previous plan that was dismissed at appeal. Um, it had 174 patrons that could you, excuse me, use this area. It was to be open until 10 p.m. And as you can see, there was development to all of its boundaries, both at the side and at the front and on the other side. And also there were some covered areas, these canopies here that were shown. This is the proposed plan. So it's a reduction of patrons from 174 to 104. As you can see, the terrace has been stepped back by two metres at the front and 2.8 metres at the side. Oh, sorry. Um, it looks yeah, like we've lost, 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 lost it. Um, and it says that somebody else has started to share their um, screen. I think Councillor Jewell may have done. I dismissed that. Hopefully mine should come back up for you. Not yet. Should I try to share again? Yes. Yeah, try, yeah, try uh, and share again. Yes. We've still got a Councillor Jewell's screen up. All right. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Can everyone see the proposed second floor plan that we were? Yes. Yeah. OK, well, I'll, I'll cont continue then. So um, the differences are the reduction in patrons from 174 to 104, the step back to the front and side. There is a proposed um, fire escape here, which is now enclosed and stepped back from the front. And this has a mansard roof with a slate roof, which offers some screening. The terrace is also proposed to be closed at 1900 hours, so 7 p.m. in the evening, which is before the busiest time for the pub, which is after nine o'clock. So this is the existing and proposed elevations. So the front elevation. This is the existing, this is the proposed. You can see the mansard roof that I just mentioned here. Um, and this block here, which is the, um, the stair, stairwell um, providing access to the terrace is set back from by 5.7 metres from the frontage. Now this is the roof plan, I've provided this to try and show you the, the is quite a complex relationship with neighbours. So, Flats one to five at three the more are the closest to the development. Um, there is seven metres between the, those flats and the, the edge of the building and 12.7 metres between the building and the actual seating. So these are numbers one to four Mount Edgecombe Villas and they are um, just behind the proposal. There's set 13 metres between the very corner of number four and um, the corner of Weatherspoons, and 22.9 metres between the corner of the building and the seating. But as you'll see from some of the photos that I provide later, they're, they're, they're almost level um, here, so it does feel closer than, than that. There's another property here at the flat at four Quarry Hill, which looks over the, um, the, gut, the car park area. Now there's 22.5 metres between buildings, 33 between the building and the seating. But as you'll notice, they have a garden here which runs down closer to the development, which is within 15.5 metres. Now noise is a material planning consideration. The local plan policy seeks to ensure new development is appropriate for its location and take into account the impact on individuals from unreasonable noise and disturbance. The noise levels meet the council's own technical standards, which are set at 50 decibels. However, noise from patrons will be audible to neighbours as it will at times exceed the World Health Organization criteria, which have a lower threshold of 40 decibels which are recognised as, as ideal levels of noise. 
The proposal therefore has potential for adverse effects on neighbours which are a material consideration. So this is um, this is a photo here of number four Mount Edgecombe Villas, which I um, mentioned, and number four will be impacted the most by the increase of noise. And these are photos looking back towards the roof of Weatherspoons. From the modelling undertaken, the predicted noise level at normal times will be at the World Health Organisation level of 40 decibels. This will be exceeded on busy summer weekend evenings and during the worst case peak scenarios. In terms of the other neighbours, this is the flat at Four Quarry Hill here, and, and that's the outlook over the car park and of their garden, which runs down towards Weatherspoons. And numbers one to five at three, the more. These are flats. As you can see, they're close to the development, but they're set down lower. The noise report predicts that all nearby residences are below the World Health Organization 40 decibel level at normal trading times and above it on busy summer weekend evenings and worst case peaks. Um, this other picture here is a view from Quarry Hill. Um, where you can see the roof, and this is where the mansard roof would be. The pub has good management measures in place, but these cannot be re relied upon. Mitigation is proposed by closing the terrace from 7pm in the evening until 9.30am in the morning. This is when families will be most sensitive to noise. A condition would also ensure no audible, audible music is played. In terms of the impact on the conservation area, we've got vis visualisations from four key views. So this is the view from the moor. So you've got um, existing and proposed. Um, you will be able to see from the moor associated structures, people and lighting, um, although they will be set back by two metres from, um, from the frontage of the building. And there will be screening at one side here as well. So this is an elevated view where you'd be able to see the roof terrace. This would be from elevated views of from Wellington Terrace and, and <coughs> glimpses from the top of Jacob's Ladder. There will be light pollution, but this will be mitigated by closing the terrace at 7pm, agreeing to a lighting scheme via a condition and conditioning that lights will be turned off within 30 minutes after the terrace is closed. This is con these conditions are considered to limit the light pollution. So this is a, 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 vis a visualisation from Mount Edgecombe Terrace. So there's the current roof and this is a proposed um, view. And these are the view from Mount Edgecombe Villas um, where they, you can see the um, acoustic screen. So there's the existing roof, there's the proposal. Overall, in terms of the impact on the conservation officer, your officers consider they represent less than substantial harm, which is to be weighed against the public benefits of the proposal. In terms of the balance of considerations, the positive aspects are the growth of an existing business, supporting local jobs, additional facilities for customers, its town centre location, the town council support um, the application. They've um, mentioned that they approve of the design and consider that it doesn't distract from the building or, or its surroundings. And they also consider the reduced hours to 7 p.m. are acceptable. But the negatives of the scheme are that the harm highlighted from noise to neighbours and from less than substantial harm to the conservation area. In terms of the conditions and mitigation, so there's a reduction of patrons, the design has changed and the closing um, would be at seven o'clock in the evening and conditions would be for um, the opening hours, lighting to control the fallback position and that no audible music is played. Your officers consider on balance that the benefits of the scheme outweigh the harm identified subject to the conditions set out and the application is recommended for a conditional approval. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. 
Uh, we do have a member of the public wishing to speak, and that's Julie Evans. Do we have Julie with us, Rowena? We do, Chairman. If Julie could just press star six to unmute her telephone. Can you hear me, please, Ms Evans? Hello. Hello. Are we? Yes. Can, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Good. And we can hear you, although you are a little faint, so perhaps you could um, speak up if you wouldn't mind. Uh, you have three minutes to present your case and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you, oh. you, that, that, you, that volume is a bit better. Thank you. Um, OK. You have three minutes to present your case and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, I live at number four Mount Edgecombe Villas and my main concern, obviously, is the noise level. They're proposing to put the um, 15 air handling units towards the rear of the premises on the roof terrace. Um, we need to know exactly um, what level 15 air conditioning units or handling units actually means. Um, you took a sound reading according to the notes from the um, flat above the funeral parlour. Now they are considerably further away than the villas itself. Um, my main concern obviously is then the noise level of um, people 104 admittedly obviously not all will be speaking at the same time however they find it very difficult to um, manage just a handful of people that are in the rear space that they have at the moment and i have had to frequently um, call them and remind them to go and sort it out with regards to very foul language that i don't appreciate um, the only bit of outside space that we do have is obviously towards the rear of the premises. And, um, you know, we all need to enjoy our garden, mainly for our well-being and mental health. We also have people who, you know, have children that come round. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't think it's nice for them to have to listen to that kind of language. It's seven days a week. Admittedly, it's only 9.30 in the morning until 7 p.m. However, I, because of the situation we're in, I do work from home and I can hear people on the roof even now, even when I'm inside my house and especially inside my office. So I would like to make my objections with regards to the noise level that I feel this is going to create. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any quick questions for clarification, please? What, from me? No, no, sorry. Oh, if you God. wouldn't mind just holding on a minute, please. Okay. Smashing. Thank you. No, I see nothing indicated. Vice Chairman, could you just confirm, please? Yes, Chairman, that's, I agree. Thank you. Uh, then, then thank you very much, Ms Evans, um, for coming along. And we now move on uh, to Councillor Spargo, um, a Falmouth Town Council who wishes to speak in support of the application. Are you with us, Councillor Spargo? Yes, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, good morning, and you're coming through loud and clear. Councillor Spargo, you have three minutes and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Falmouth Town Council uh, recommended approval of this application. Um, we recommended approval of the first application for a roof terrace, which was turned down uh, by this committee and on appeal. The latest application has significantly reduced the number of seats and size of the terrace it's also significantly reduced the opening times for the terrace by closing now, proposing to close at 7 pm, which will also alleviate fears over light pollution. A key issue for the council is that the Weatherspoons currently are able to use the parking area at the rear of their building for overspill seating. In fact, it's just been mentioned by the previous speaker. 
Um, they've agreed to forego this usage if the current application is approved, and, and I understand this would be included as a condition of any approval. Uh, that was a big factor for us because we, we believe it's desirable to avoid continued use of that parking area, which is equally as likely to generate noise and disturbance as the proposed roof terrace. Uh, we also believe that it's important to support a successful local business, which clearly has the ability to grow if allowed. Um, we've had a similar application in the past where we fought hard to stop another local pub from being given uh, retrospective planning for decking and terraces in the rear garden because of the high significant overlooking noise and nuisance levels. Um, that one was passed, uh, so there's a degree of sort of inconsistency here. Um, if this um, isn't allowed, it's um, not being consistent with the, this other application. Um, we need consistency in planning. It's already been mentioned by Councillor Brown. It's becoming a bit of an issue. Um, and hopefully, you know, if we understand what we're doing and dealing with and we're consistent, then the public will know what's going on as well. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there any queries for Councillor Spargo, please? Any questions? Councillor Mould. Hello, Councillor Spargo. Um, can you Hi. just tell me, so how, how long has the pub been there? I mean, it, it's not a new build, is it? It's, it's been there some time, I would imagine. Uh, well, it's been there uh, considerable time, yeah. Um, I've yeah, been so it's it, now it, for 27 it, years, and I, I'm okay. So, so it's a long-standing pub in the central location. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Bunches, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, it was only reference to the fact that I believe you said they have a current area they use at the rear of the premises at present, which they're willing to give up on if the roof terrace is passed. Um, yeah. Now, I don't wish to doubt what they say, but what's to say that they have to give up that current area at the rear? I mean, if they get their roof terrace there, next thing you know, um, half the half the occupants of the building are at the rear, the one they're using now, and half are on the roof terrace. What's to stop them completely from using the current area as well as the new roof terrace, may I ask? Well, we've been led to understand that there would be a condition on the planning approval imposed so that they couldn't use it anymore. Fine, and that will just be a condition rather than it being dug up and turned into something else. I mean, obviously, I, I only doubt sometimes because I've seen these uh, overspills at the majority of successful such premises as this. You know, it's, uh, it's out into the street, it's up the, uh, up the TV mast if they have to find somewhere. But, you know, there's no control at times in some of these locations. It just does concern me that they suddenly have two areas instead of the present one. But I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I see no further questions indicated. Would you concur, please, Vice Chairman? Yes, Chairman, agree. Thank you. Uh, then thank you very much, Councillor Spargo, for coming and putting your point. Um, and we now move on to Jamie Piper, who is speaking on behalf of the applicant. Uh, Mr Piper, are you there? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Mr. Piper, loud and clear. Um, right. thank, you, thank you for joining us. You have three minutes to put your case and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. Many thanks, Chair. As has been set out in your report, your officer's report, these proposals have sought to address issues raised in respect of the previous larger scheme that were refused by officers and subsequently dismissed the appeal on grounds of relating to noise and heritage. These proposals represent a substantial reduction in scale from the previous scheme and prior to submitting the application have been the subject of pre-application discussions with your officers, including environmental health. The resultant scheme is therefore much reduced from the previous version and stepped in from the boundaries of the building. This has resulted in a roof terrace which is less prominent and due to the increased separation distances, reduced capacity, reduced capacity and a 7pm closure is shown not to exceed the existing ambient levels in peak trading scenario and is the support of the Town Council. The building itself, despite being Art Deco in appearance, was actually constructed in the early 2000s 
Presently, the roof is covered by in a large, unattractive flues and plant together with a two-metre-high solid metal fence running the width of the building. The entirety of this area is covered in bird netting. These proposals will rationalise and replace all of the, the plant and consolidate into a much smaller and screened acoustic enclosure. Whilst it is accepted that the proposals might be seen from certain long distance elevator viewpoints as evidenced on the visualisations that have been prepared, this change does not equate to harm and will provide an additional seating in an attractive environment to this popular community facility. As the visuals show, the proposals will improve the outlook of the properties to the rear who will come to the rear elevation of the public house who have a, a full view of the existing disorganised roofscape. From a noise perspective, the methodology for assessing noise levels was agreed with environmental health officers prior to the submission of this application. The accompanying noise impact assessment confirms that plant noise will be below background levels and quieter than the existing plant which is to be replaced and noise from the new terrace will be below existing ambient levels. JD Weatherspoons have many beer gardens and roof terraces close to residential environments and with management practices and restrictions in place successfully operate these without any issues. It is to be noted that the hours of this terrace have been reduced down to 7pm in the evening and there will be staff permanently supervising the area. Furthermore, the peak hours of this pub are typically when students visit the pub later in the evening, by which point the terrace will be closed. As has been mentioned in your officer's report, the car park area to the rear of the site could lawfully be used as a beer garden area on an unrestricted basis. However, the roof terrace would be much preferred by JD Weatherspoon since it is a contained environment with staff able to control and monitor it com comings and goings. Should members be minded to grant permission today, my client is happy to accept a condition that rescinds their ability to use the car park area as a beer garden, thereby offering a degree of betterment on what the existing lawful situation would allow. Um, we therefore respect the, excuse me, uh, all matters considered, it is respectfully suggested that the proposals thank, thank offer you. an acceptance. Thank you very thank you, much. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Piper. Perhaps you just hold on for any questions. Okay. Um, thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Piper, please? For clarification. I see none indicated. Chair, and Councillor Martin. Councillor John Martin. Oh, right. Um, thank you. Right, Councillor Martin, please. Thank you, Chair. I'll just confirm the, the use of the car park. Is it mainly for the workers or, or the employees of the Spoons, or is it a public car park? Please. It's it's not a public car park, no, but it's it's a car park that can be used by customers of the pub. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other questions can you confirm please vice chairman yes confirm chairman thank you uh then thank you very much for joining us mr piper thank you and we thank now you. move on to hear from the divisional member that's councillor kirkham you there councillor kirkham i am can you hear me okay yeah we can um councillor kirkham you'll be asked to sum up after five minutes please right thank you very much um, I don't normally come to planning committee. I think this is only the second or third time I've done it in three years. Um, the reason I'm here this time is because this was an application that was made previously. It lost on appeal. Um, the changes that have been made from last time are to reduce the numbers from 174 to 104 patrons, as you've heard, to move it back two metres from the edge. And there are some proposed planning conditions that it could only be used between 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. Those are planning only. The licensing conditions are still there to say it can be used until I think two in the morning of the pub. Um, the real issue is the noise and the nuisance to um, local residents. And I think that is a, quite a big material consideration. Um, the limit that the noise consultants that the um, that Weatherspoons um, got to do the report was 50 decibels. The WHO limit is 40 decibels, as you've heard. Now, the applicant's own survey said that the worst case peaks would all be 50 decibels. Exactly, pretty much. Um, their, the, this, um, their noise projections were based on a pub they've got in Brixham. Now, Brixham is very different to Falmouth. Um, Weatherspoons in Falmouth is a very busy pub and it's a student pub. It's not um, sort of a quiet touristy pub in the same way it would be in Brixham. 
Um, also, the council limit after seven o'clock, seven o'clock in the evening is only 45 decibels. So if this roof terrace was to stay open more, longer than seven, say the planning condition fell or wasn't complied with, then that really would be a noise issue. Um, you, you'll probably all know the geography of um, Falmouth Moor. It is kind of a bowl in a quarry, so noise does echo yeah. and it does rise and travel. And um, the neighbourhood's, the neighbour's amenity space here, the lady you just heard from, Julie Evans, is literally yards away on the same level as the um, her garden and the back of her house as the roof terrace. Um, and the flats below as well. I don't I couldn't find that anyone from the flats below knew about the application, which was a bit strange, but I'm glad that uh, Mrs Evans came anyway to, to say uh, what the effects would be on her. I am also worried like her about the roof plant, the 15 new air handling units at the rear of the property, which are right by these residents in Mount Edgecombe Villas. And there will be noise and there will be smells that, that come out of those. And um, there are problems with the houses that are there with the um, with one extraction unit, which is on top of Buku's, which is um, fairly close to them as well, which is the building that's owned by the town council. So the idea of having 15 of these does concern me somewhat. Um, there's also the issue of the lights. Of course, there will be lights up there, which are uh, one of the planning conditions is to switch them off half an hour after the roof terrace closes. So that would be half past seven. <clears throat> but of course, that may not always happen. Um, and there's no awning or canopy over where the um, at the back where the extraction fans will be, which concerns me a little bit as well. I can't really see the massive benefits to Falmouth of having a roof terrace on the top of Weatherspoons, to be honest. I can't see it would provide an awful lot of new jobs or anything like that, but I can see the negatives to the local residents. Um, there was the question brought up about the certificate of lawful use for the car park. Now, at the moment, there is um, a small roof, um, sorry, a small beer garden there and the car park. The car park is used to deliver, um, deliver to the pub as well as for, I think, mainly staff to park. The certificate of lawful use was applied for just before this roof terrace application was made. Um, and it went through. And so they have now made this offer not to use this area or some of the area, because remember, they already have um, seating in part of it anyway, if they got the roof terrace. Now, it might look to maybe a cynical observer, like they got the certificate of lawful use as a kind of leverage to to, to to try again with this roof ter terrace application that's already been turned down once and on appeal and in fact some members of the um of the the town team think they might even be happier if the the tables and chairs were left in that back rear area and it was fenced off properly and used as a proper beer garden and access through the um through the pub with an emergency access outside so it is not completely um, we're not completely sure whether a roof terrace would be preferable, to be honest. Um, so I think those are my main points. Um, there is the issue about the conservation area as well. And I think there was um, the Historic Environment Officer did say there was a conflict with policy 12 and 24 of that because of the um, impact on the conservation area. So to sum up, um, my issues with this are the material consideration of, on the impact of the noise, the, the smell, the light and the nuisance to local residents and the impact on the conservation area and the concern that any planning um, condition that was put on for timings and in fact for the rear garden part as well would, as Councillor Batters said, kind of um, would degenerate through time. Um, because the license wouldn't be changed, the license would st the license to serve alcohol will still be there until two o'clock in the morning. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Kirkham. Uh, are there any quick questions for Councillor Kirkham, please? Yeah, Councillor Brown, please. Yeah, just sorry, just just the basic question. Um, Councillor Kirkham has said a lot to us, which is very helpful because it's things that other people haven't told us. <coughs> but are you are you at the end of the day asking us to approve the application, possibly with strengthened conditions or to refuse it? I am concerned that the conditions, because they are planning conditions, 
um, may not last. Um, so ideally, um, I would ask for a refusal, but I do understand um, that the planning officer has recommended um, approval with those conditions. The conditions nine o'clock in the morning is very early to open a roof terrace, particularly at the weekends. And I'm worried that this seven o'clock may stretch. Um, so I am concerned about the enforceability, I suppose, of the conditions. Um, thank you. Uh, I've just got one quick one, please, Ker Councillor Kirkham. Uh, do you feel that this has been a borderline decision for you because uh, the Falmouth Town Council have taken the opposite view? They have, they have. Um, I was very swayed by the residents and the fact that this was a very similar application was refused and refused on appeal only well less than three years ago and I don't think the changes that have been made are that big to be honest going down from 174 to 104 people I don't know whether that'll make a huge amount of difference in all the plant that's gone on the roof as well so yes I understand the town council's position but um, I, I, I still maintain the concern that was obviously felt the last time that the application was um, produced. Thank you. Uh, I don't, Councillor Thomas, your, your light is flashing on my screen. Are you trying to ask a question? No, Madam Chair, I don't know why that is. No, I don't either. Nope. Okay, I see no further crosses in the box. Uh, Oh, Councillor Tudor. Councillor Tudor. Yes. Uh, sorry, Councillor Kirk. I'm just wanted to ask. So, uh, your understanding is that those those people on the adjacent flats um, were not aware of the planning application. I I didn't realise. I didn't realise that they weren't, but I did speak to the resident, obviously, who has come forward to speak and, and she says she's been trying to get hold of them and she didn't think they were. So I can't say for definite, mm. but I don't believe that they were this time. I believe they should have had a letter, though, because yeah. they're close. Yes, I was. I was and I haven't been able to get out very much because of COVID, to be honest. Yes, no, that's right. No, I just wondered maybe the planning officer could tell us whether those residents have received a planning a letter. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see no further indication for queries of the divisional member. Can you confirm, please, Vice Chairman? Yes, happy to agree, Chairman. Thank you. Then we move on to questions of the planning officer. Are there any questions of the planning officer, please? Councillor Tudor. Yeah, thanks. Same question. Did the residents of the flats get a, um, a letter? Um, I don't have the, um, the information in front of me, but we would have advertised the application in line with our policies. And obviously, bearing in mind the inspector had, had mentioned those neighbours previously, we've um, certainly included them in our um, consideration of the application. So they would have got a letter? Um, uh, without checking, I don't know if um, if Matt is um, available and, and can look that information up for me. Well, I'll, I'll have to have a look on the same system that Laura has access to, so you'll have to give me a moment. Yeah. Can we come back to you? I'm, I'm conscious that yeah. we're only on application three. Yeah. And we now have several people indicating questions. I'll come back to you, Councillor. Yeah. Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Chair. Two questions. Um, Councillor Kirkham has some concern about the conflict between the licence and the planning conditions. But are, am I right in thinking that the planning conditions would, would override the licensing? So effectively, if planning won't let them go after seven o'clock, they can't use the licensing condition. And the other thing is I noticed the applicant said he would accept a condition that his rear uh, car park wouldn't be used as, a, as, a, as an overspill car, um, garden. Is that a condition we can impose on this application? So in terms of um, the first question, um, 
yeah, planning and uh, licensing are, are, are have separate legislation. So a condition um, on the terrace, we would be able to enforce, um, and that is separate from the licensing conditions, which are on the, the whole of the premises. Um, in terms of the condition to restrict them using the rear car park, um, there is a proposed condition number seven in the agenda on page 61, which um, we've added to ensure, ensure that that area would not be used for outside drinking and gathering. Thank I'll you. come back up, Chair, on the notifications. Yes. Yes. There was 20 letters sent out in total, so um, all the neighbouring properties were, were sent a letter. Thank you. Uh, right. Councillor, can we can we be as concise as possible now, please? Councillor Alvey. Hopefully mine's a very quick one. Um, actually, what concerns me most in this is the impact of those air handling units uh, in terms of the noise that they may generate um, for the neighbours, because cl clearly they'll be whirring away all times of day and possibly night. Um, what confidence have we got that the, the noise level from those air handling units is not going to adversely affect uh, the neighbours? But um, we, we heard from the, the residents earlier on who, who's most concerned about that. OK, and um, I think I'm going to invite uh, Michelle Cowie, who's our environmental protection officer, to um, answer that technical question. Uh, good afternoon. The proposed air handling units, the data that's been provided, shows that they will be below background level of noise. Um, that's, of course, as long as they operate as um, advertised. All right, Councillor Alvey. Um, not not totally not totally convinced um, because clear, clearly the the noise that a um, a fan might make and and I appreciate that when there are people on the roof terrace they'll probably drown out the fans but actually the constant hum of a fan even though it's below the decibel level of people on the roof terrace um, it can probably be more irritating to people uh, living next door to it. Okay thank you. Councillor Jewell. Yes uh, Jane was saying that the license for the terrace is going to be at nine o'clock but I've read it says in paragraph 46 nine thirty. can we just clarify that it's nine thirty in the morning till 7 p.m please? Yeah um let me just find we've got a yes yeah, 9 30 condition 9 30. yeah i thought i thought so because james seems nice as 9 30. thank you i think um jane was talking about 9 p.m i think the, the no, no, 7 p.m 7 p.m on the terrace yeah, 9 9 to 7 p.m yes okay uh i see no other further questions for the planning officer indicated can you confirm please vice chairman Mary, are you there? I see no further questions. Yes, I mean, agree. Yeah, thank you. Then we move straight into debate, please. Who's going to start this one? No one. <laughs> Someone must have a view. Thank you. Always rely on you. Thank you, Councillor Kenny. Councillor Kenny first, then please, then Councillor Brown. Well, yes, it's really difficult. Um, you don't often get an application where the town council and the local member actually don't agree. Um, oh, I, 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 I genuinely don't know. I mean, I'm very sympathetic to the neighbour about this, but I do think the conditions are quite strong and i do think they will work from seven o'clock so i'm inclined to support the application but i could be persuaded not to right thank you um councillor may did you indicate please yes i, I did chairman i was thank going you. to propose as set out what i did want to say was um that of course you'll have two conditions here, you'll have licensing and you will have planning. 
that will be able to enforce yeah. Um, and, and also you have um, you have background noise, lots and lots of background noise. But I also understand where the residents are coming from. I don't live there. They do. Um, but as we've heard, Weatherspoons has been there for some 20 years. Um, I'm not sure how long the residents there, most probably the ones in Mount Edgecombe Terrace have been there quite a while. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know where that came from. It's not my house. <laughs> no, it's not mine either. Um, businesses are looking for a way out beyond COVID. Um, and I know we can't use COVID as an excuse, uh, but, you know, they are being, um, they're, they're trying to think outside of the box. This is a very uh, well used pub. Um, and like the officer said, it's where the coaches pull up. Um, and, you know, I know Councillor Kirkham said it's a student place, but I've got a 92 year old lady who goes there most Saturdays when it's open, of course. Uh, they go off and they buy their cards at the end of town and then they come back to Weatherspoons uh, where her and her son have lunch. And I know a lot of elderly residents go there as well. We all like to sit outside. You know, you've also got those lovely trees there that hopefully will take away some of the noise and the humdrum from the roof. However, it, it, they put, it possibly won't for these um, residents that, that live quite close. Uh, but I think from going from 174 um, on the roof, um, members of the public who are um, going to Weatherspoons down to 104 is quite a big change and also going from, you know, they've reduced their times as well, which they have to. Um, and if you look at the report, um, the Heritage Officer Conservation Officer is saying the harm to the conservation area would be less than substantial. So I know he's obviously going on and, and mitigating that as well, uh, but I will, I'll finish there. So happy to propose. Thank you very much, Councillor May. Now, I've got a whole string of people wishing to speak on this, but I noticed, Councillor Martin, that you came in as quickly uh, just when Councillor May was proposing. Does that mean you wish to second? No, Madam Chair. No, it doesn't. Right. Uh, in that case, I think the first thing I can ask is that um, you raise your hand if you wish to second Councillor May's proposal, please raise the hand. Is there no one wishing to second Councillor May? Yes, I've just raised. I've just raised my hand, Madam Chair. It's oh, Karen. Right. It hasn't come. Ah, oh, yes. You've right. got two there. You've got Thank two you. there, Chairman. Councillor yes. I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to second a set out. Thank you. Thank you. Did you wish to say anything else, Councillor Moore? Uh, no, very much. I agree with Councillor May. Um, you know, I think probably all the mitigation is there. And if the officer is happy with this, it's been a long drawn out affair. Um, I think they've done a, a huge amount to make this work. So I'm happy to support. We do need to be supporting our businesses after this dreadful 12 months we've just had. So happy to second. Thank you very much. Uh, right. I've still got several speakers. Can, can I ask you to be concise, please? And um, you know, maybe not to repeat if, if someone has already said what you wish to say. Uh, Councillor Brown, you're first, please. Yep, always concise, always original. Just just two points. One is listening to the objector. I got the impression that her concern just as much as the volume of noise is the actual language which is overheard. And I don't know what can be done about that. Um, so, theref so therefore, I hope that that will make it better. The other point I want to make is that several of us are on licensing committee. We're always told we're always told rightly that licensing and planning are separate processes. But in a way that should give some comfort to people who are concerned about this development, because if it does go wrong, if they start to abuse the conditions or um, or the premises start to be used in an antisocial way. There are opportunities both through planning and through licensing for that to be addressed. So for the moment, I'm inclined to give the benefit to the applica applicants and to um, support. Thank you. Right, Councillor Jewell, I know you'll be concise. 
Thank you. Yeah, it's it's all been said by Councillor Mayry. I was going to second, so I'm I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. it. Thank you, Thank you. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I tend to be uh, supportive of uh, Councillor Kirkham. I'm aware of the, the sound bowl, if you like, within the moor, um, and this would only lift elements of it into the residential area. I'm, I'm quite concerned about that. However, few would be on that roof. They will they'll be need, needing to talk above the levels of the fans and the, and the uh, extractors. I do worry uh, and I'm concerned for the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Simmons. Councillor Simmons, are you there? Yes, sorry, <laughs> uh, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I, I actually use this pub at times. Um, uh, I walk by there quite frequently and most of the people to sit out the front by the bus stops uh, during the, sh uh, the the shopping hours and they are quite intimidating really because they're outside having their smoke. Uh, I think this will actually take some of them away to go up on the roof um, and so the, sh the, the shoppers can sort of don't feel uh, that they're being looked at by people drinking and smoking outside on the pavement. So yeah, I, I'm quite happy to support it. Thank you very much. Um, can I ask the people who've got their hands raised to lower them, please? Because I think they're probably uh, historic now. This Councillor Jewel, your hand's still up. Councillor Jewel, your hand's still raised. Thank you. Uh, and I don't think there is anyone else wishing to speak, is there? I think I have covered them all. Would you agree, Vice Chair? Um, yes, Chairman, just that Councillor Kirkham is, is just um, commenting on Councillor Jewell. But I know that, but I don't think that yes. that is the business for the committee. That is um, exactly Councillor Jewell's personal decision. Uh, right. And um, presumably the legal officer is looking at the chat uh, line. Um, since you've raised it, Loretta, are, are you there, please? I am, Chair. I'm presuming that the question Councillor Kirkham has put in the chat line is um, not allowable on two points. One, the divisional member is not allowed to question a member of the committee. And second, it's Councillor Jewell's decision. Am I right? Or? Uh, yeah, it, this is um, a separate um, decision um, at this planning committee. Um, so it's a matter for um, Councillor Jewell um, as a member of this committee um, to make his decision on the planning yes. application before him at this time. No, absolutely. Right, thank you very much. Then let's move swiftly on. Uh, we have a proposal for approval as set out, <coughs> pr proposed by Councillor May, seconded by Councillor Mould. Emma, would you like to take the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. I'll do a roll call vote. If you could indicate whether you're for, against or abstaining. Councillor Alvey? For. Councillor Batters? Against. Councillor Brown? Four. Councillor Bull. Four. Councillor Dyer. Councillor Dyer. Four. Thank you. Councillor Jewell. Four. Councillor Kenny. Four. Councillor Martin. Against. Councillor May. Four. Councillor Mould. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Tudor. Against. Councillor Simmons. Four. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that the motion to approve is being carried by 10 votes in favour with three against and no abstentions. Thank you very much. Now, the next one shouldn't be too long and we have to um, link with the um, with the, with the public link, which starts again at two o'clock. That's right, isn't it, Emma? So I'm going to go on to the next item and we will break for lunch after it. Uh, so let's hope we can get through it in a reasonably speedy way. So agenda item 4.4, .4, P 
PA20039501, Mr. Dan Gilbert, Quaker Cottage Penstrays Chasewater, extension of domestic cartilage and construction of double garage with ancillary accommodation to main dwelling within roof space. Um, the planning officer is Neve Ashworth. It's Neve's first time with us, so welcome, Neve. Thank you. Can everybody Hello. see my can everybody see my presentation? Yes, we can. Thank you. OK, so the key issues are the visual impact of the proposal on the character of the World Heritage Site, the access to the site and the loss of agricultural land. This is the location plan. It shows a site line to the northeast of Chasewater and within the open countryside. And um, it also shows that it lies within the World Heritage Site. This is the site plan showing the site in context of other residential dwellings to the east and to the south here. Um, and it shows that it's not the site is not seen in isolation. It differentiates the application site and the land to the north. So this is the land to the north, which looks more like agricultural land. And then this is the application site here. It also shows the site in relation to the nearest public right of way, which is some 320 metres to the northwest of the application. This is the aerial plan of the site, again showing chase water down here. This is the block plan. It outlines the proposed boundary treatment um, along the north east and west of the site. Um, this would be conditioned to be um, the proposed Cornish stone boundary treatment at 900 mil with evergreen planting on the top. This is considered to provide an environmental and visual improvement to the site and this would be conditioned to be prior to first use of the building. This shows the elevations and the floor plans. At ground floor, we're going to have a double garage with internal stairs leading to a home office and storage. It also denotes the materials, which include some stone facing on the northern and southern elevations um, and painted render on the eastern and western elevations with some coin detailing on all of the elevations. It also shows that natural slate roof tiles and terracotta ridge tiles. Next slide shows some photographs of the site as it currently is. Um, this shows the site is currently laid to gravel and used for the storage of building materials, um, resulting in somewhat untidy appearance. The northern boundary is the timber fencing along here and the eastern boundary is this untidy unfinished boundary here. This shows again the gravel how it is at the minute, um, and this is the western boundary of the site would be here where these aggregate piles are. This shows the relationship with the site to the west, which is part of the ongoing enforcement case. Um, and it also shows the relationship with this, with the, sorry, the existing dwelling house built here. Again, this is a better photograph of the existing dwelling houses. These were approved under um, planning application PA 17-10840. And this is another application, uh, another photograph of the two dwellings. This photograph shows the existing access into the site, um, which shows a low level wall and safe and convenient access into the site. It also shows um, a double garage on the other side of the road, which would be a similar design style as the proposal. This is a view beyond the northern timber fence, which is showing a field. And clearly is different to what is the existing use of the land of the application site. So this brings us to the balance of considerations. The loss of agricultural land would not give rise to any serious adverse impact on to the wider area. 
The materials, design and finishes of the proposed garage are considered acceptable and in keeping with those of the existing dwellings. There would be a significant environmental improvement to the site, resulting in an overall improvement to the World Heritage Site. A safe and convenient access is existing and is proposed. Therefore, recommended approval subject to the conditions set out in the committee report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neve. Uh, now, uh, we do not have any members of the public wishing to speak. Um, but we do have Councillor Foster of Chasewater Parish Council speaking in objection. Can you hear us, Councillor Foster? You might need to press Hello. star six. Ah. Hello? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Foster, you have three minutes to put your case and you'll be told when 30 seconds remain. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Uh, yes, my name's uh, Stuart Foster. I'm a councillor on Chasewater Parish Council. Uh, Chasewater Parish Council is um, unanimous in its opposition to this application. We do feel that it is uh, continued over development of the site uh, within the agricultural setting uh, and further expansion into the open countryside. Uh, we therefore feel that uh, expanding the domestic curtilage is inappropriate. Uh, and it does seem that uh, there is continual addition of new buildings, movement of buildings, uh, and uh, it uh, seems very much a case of um, a lack of transparency of uh, what is proposed uh, on the site longer term. Um, we have seen over time many sheds appearing, disappearing, um, changing position, caravans and uh, a camper van, and you've, you've heard that there are ongoing enforcement action uh, that dates back to January of 2019, when there were several caravans on site. Uh, our last update from the enforcement team uh, told us that the, they were still negotiating removal of the unauthorised uh, development and that it was taking longer because the landowner had continue to erect new buildings without planning permission. And therefore, you know, we do feel that there is a lack of transparency or a lack of perhaps um, design overall intent, one or the two, uh, since things seem to keep changing uh, every time anyone goes back to look at the site. We have also um, had quite a lot of uh, concerns about amenity on the site and in relation to this latest application it would seem to be borne out there is uh, provision for parking spaces at the front of the two new dwellings that have been constructed and yet it seems this requirement for garages proves the point that the original amenity uh, was inappropriate and that the previous application itself uh, should probably have been deemed over development. We do feel that it's inappropriate perhaps to be having to decide on this application when enforcement action is ongoing uh, and it seems uh, difficult to uh, support it day. because um, we are losing more and more of the agricultural land and the site has continued to increase in size. So really coming around full circle, we are opposed to this scheme uh, primarily on the basis of over development and encroachment into the countryside. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Councillor Foster. Are there any quick questions for clarification, please? I see no, no one's indicated. Would you um, confirm, please, Vice Chairman? Yes, Chairman, that's, that's correct. Thank you. Then thank you very much for joining us, Councillor Foster. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And we have no one speaking uh, in support or nor an agent coming this morning. So we move straight on to the divisional member who's our very own Councillor Dyer. Um, Councillor Dyer, uh, you'll be asked to sum up after five minutes, please. Thank you, ma'am. I have supported Chasewater Parish Council in the request that this be brought to committee because of the 
uh, really the long drawn out saga as the uh, councillor Foster from Chasewater Parish Council said of uh, caravanettes, um, camper vans, um, accommodation while houses are being built um, that to a certain extent has confirmed the concerns of Chasewater Parish Council. Um, as one ma'am and I think everyone will agree I am an adamant protector of agricultural land but this site and I've got to be fair here as set out uh, was largely the former farmyard and the farmyard buildings that had degenerated to a certain extent and as agricultural buildings needed a tidying up and B, making them more functional for modern day agriculture than they were. But um, I can't personally support the loss of agricultural land with this proposal. And I expect there are members that are uh, saying what's come over John Dyer because he is an adamant supporter of agricultural land. But that does not really apply to this particular site. I think part of the confusion is that Quaker House and Quaker Cottage, as they were, were in semi-detached uh, positions and they were both end on to the road that is marked there uh, with the word proposal going across it, which is a fairly significant road. Um, yeah, that's the mum, thank you. And I think the building of two cottages, separate cottages, has uh, made Quaker House and Quaker Cottage two buildings as to uh, they were virtually one building end on to the the road with the proposal written across it so um it's it's a difficult one the site needs tidying up the enforcement issue is going on and that must continue about the building that uh, is being investigated on site um but i don't think there's a lot more i can say ma'am um <sighs> Yes, it's for the committee to decide, but it's not a cut and dried case by any means. And uh, I will leave it at that at this point. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Councillor Dyer. Are there any quick questions for clarification to Councillor Dyer? Please, Councillor Kenny. Yes, Councillor Dyer, I thought it was a very fair assessment. If there wasn't the enforcement action, would you have any problem with this uh, this double garage being built on the, the what I understand is the yard? No, no, because uh, it's a fairly exposed site. It's on high ground, and I don't blame them for wanting a double garage to put the cars in. Um, two cars per household is quite normally. And uh, if I'm totally honest with you, I've got two cars and two tractors in my carriage. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, I see no other indications of questions for Councillor Dyer. Again, can you just concur, please, Vice Chairman? Yes, that's correct, Chairman. Thank you. Then we move straight on to questions of the planning officer. Can you indicate if you have any questions, please? I see no indication. Oh, Councillor Ken uh, Kenny. So the enforcement action is is completely independent of this application. Is that roughly what's being said? Yes. That's still running. No, sorry. Um, sorry, sorry, Councillor Dyer. It's questions of the planning officer now. So 
Uh, Neve, would you like to answer that one? I, I was wondering that as well, please, how, how much the enforcement issue should make any material consideration. Thank you. Um, yes, that's an ongoing issue with the enforcement team. Um, I have been in touch with um, the enforcement officer on that um, and she it is a separate issue as well. Um, we are we are enabled. We can make a decision on the planning application irrespective of the decision on the enforcement case. Um, and I think we need to look at the planning merits in this one. Um, and is the enforcement talking about caravans that are supporting the bill so workers are in it or is it an attempt to provide permanent accommodation? No, it's a separate issue. It's on the site to the west of my site um, and it's the buildings that have been it's basically the, 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 the use of the land and the buildings is my understanding um, is the ongoing enforcement case. Thank if you. It, if it's a separate issue, Neve, yeah. my understanding is that we, we that that is completely separate from this application. That's correct, yes. Yeah. Whatever doesn't matter what they're being used for. Right. Um so I see no further um questions for the planning officer. Again, can you confirm, Vice Chairman? Yes, Chairman, that's correct. Thank you. Then we move straight into debate, please. Who's going to start this one? Councillor Kenny, thank you. Councillor Kenny, I think you might be on mute. All right, right. Yes, well, if even Councillor Dyer says this isn't actually agricultural land, but a, but a yard, I mean, I think he was very fair. Uh, I'm very sympathetic to Chase Water Council because of the other problem, but I think we are bound to only look at this one in isolation. And I can't see a reason for not allowing a garage on something which is a yard. So I'm going to propose support as written. But I am sympathetic to what the Ch Chase Water is saying, because it's not it's not it's not good. But I don't think we are allowed to take it into consideration. No, two separate issues. But thank you very much, Councillor Kenny. Um, can you put an X in the chat box if you wish to second, please? Anyone wish to second the proposal for approval as set out that Councillor Kenny has just made? Could you put an X in the chat box? Thank you very much. And Councillor Alvey, you were first. Would you like to speak? Um, only to say that, yes, I, 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 I take on board Councillor Dyer's comments and, and I think it would be difficult to refuse this um, on, on the basis of the, uh, the the land quality. The World Heritage Site people are, are, are not uh, uncomfortable with it. So I, I'm quite happy to second. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Martin, were you just going to second or did you want to add something to the debate? Yes, indeed. I just need I just would like to second it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, right, I have no one else indicating they wish to speak. And I have a proposal from Councillor Kenny to approve as set out, which has been seconded by Councillor Alvey. Emma, would you like to take the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman. It will be a roll call vote if you could indicate whether you're for, against or abstaining. Councillor Alvey. For. Councillor Batters. For. Councillor Brown is not present. Councillor Bull. For. Councillor Jewell. For. Councillor Kenny. For. Councillor Martin. For. Councillor May. For. Councillor Mould. For. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Tudor. Four. Councillor Simmons. Four. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, I can confirm that the motion to approve is being carried unanimously. That's uh, smashing to end on a unanimous note uh, at last, just before lunch. So thank you very much. Um, right, it is now four minutes past one. Uh, do you want to come back at, at a half past one or do you want that extra five minutes? Um, people, somebody shout out. Are you happy? Half past one, I'm happy with. Half yes, past one, one everybody, right. We'll see, yes, you back at one, see you back at one thirty then. Ah, just a minute, Emma, does that work for you with the link? 
Uh, yes, we, the only thing you'll, you'll have is a change in the link for the members of the public. If you start at 1.30, we can continue with this link, but we'd have a break in the link, so they'd have to swap over if you were to do that. Is that OK? Because that would gain the committee half an hour, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, you'd need to give me a couple of minutes to speak to the live stream operator. Um, uh, OK. Right. Uh, uh, what now? You want that before we call the break? Yeah, just so we know when we're all coming back. Yeah. OK, thank you. Sorry, everyone, but the same question would apply if it was 25 to 2, wouldn't it? So We don't want an hour's lunch. That would be spoiling you far too much. Chairman, I've had a message back from the live stream operator to say that um, he will stop this link now when we go for our break and then we'll commence with a new link at 1.30. Right. OK. Uh, well, I hope that's still time enough for you all. So see you back at 1.30. Thank you. Cameras and microphones off if we could, please. Thanks. 